scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Appreciate all the workers and everybody for your diligence. Even while I was away, thank you so much. And... Um, I want to appreciate all of us again for consistently submitting ourselves to the dealings of the Spirit. There is a formula for impact. There is a formula for carrying heavy weights of the presence of God. There is a formula for affecting a generation. And what is happening to you is the building that will lead to that. You are satisfying that condition. And you may not look like it now. But by and large. You will see the beauty and the glory of the Lord. Arise in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is taking us somewhere. And we give him praise for where we see him taking us. Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome every one of us. Thank you so much for being around. I want to talk to us tonight in a way that I hope will challenge us. This is a preparatory teaching for the series that we're about to start next month. And um, I trust that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Tonight's teaching is very important. And I am praying... I am praying that not only do we pay the price to come here every week and listen to the messages, but I'm praying and hoping from the depth of my heart that we are submitting ourselves to these teachings. It's amazing how lives are being transformed and changed. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus that we will keep changing. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your head and pray in tongues and say, Father, do something in my mind and my life. Please pray. Now is not the time to stay around carelessly. Be focused and pray. Lay your hands on your head and pray. Do something upon this mind. I allow you to flow through me. Let my mind not be a limitation to my destiny. There is a voice that you have given me that my generation must hear. And everything that constitutes a limitation must leave. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last week, we listened again to the message, Hallelujah, that I had preached about allowing the kingdom of God to find expression and in that teaching I began to say how that the limitation of the impact of men is not the power or the ability of God but our mind from the realm where we allow our wills our emotion and our intellect to come under submission to the government of Christ and that if we can satisfactorily do that there is no limit to which God will be able to use us. Hallelujah. Proverbs 
chapter 23 verse 7 let's begin tonight i want to establish a few things and then we'll pray you make all things new yes you make all things new and i will follow you forward that's what he's doing in someone's life tonight God has no favorites in the kingdom. Listen to me. God has no favorites in the kingdom. God loves everyone in the kingdom equally, but he does not trust everyone equally. God has no favorites in the kingdom. But the operation of God, when you read the Bible, it makes it look as though God had a soft spot for certain people and he seemed to reject others. Until you understand the character of the operation of the kingdom, you may think God has favorites. God has no favorite preachers. God has no favorite businessmen. God has no favorite students. God has no favorite history makers. Every man is saddled with the responsibility of charting the course of his destiny and the degree to which we come into alignment with God's precepts is the degree to which it looks like God is tilting towards our direction it's very important that I say this because we live in a society that the difference is clear in everything among preachers the difference is clear there are men of God struggling and struggling and struggling to make impact. There are men of God struggling to do what they call ministry. In the world of finance, there are those making impact and there are those living as if God hates them. In the world of family life, there are others raising award-winning children. There are others raising armed robbers and cowards and thieves and and nuisance to society in the world of impact there are those that the hand of God is mighty upon they are shaking lands and territories and yet there are others crouching and scrambling for relevance what is responsible for this difference could it be that God decided to choose others could it be that God just hated others is that really it? What would be responsible, brothers and sisters, for a man who rises up as a nobody? The map of your village not being on the map. And yet you rise to be a global phenomenon where people say, thank God you were born. Thank God you did not die. Blessed is the womb that produced this child what makes that difference that a man will be born a pauper with rain falling and yet at the end of his life he is a generational blessing his name becomes an access key to favor that every time you say i am associated with sam they say which sam because of that access is given what is responsible for this difference in society It's not enough just to love God and know God and pray in tongues. A true apostolic ministry prepares people to be agents of societal transformation. It's not enough just to pray in tongues. The Bible never said you are the light of the church. It said you are the light of cosmos, the world. There is a level of impact and illumination that comes from the church. The key, the key to world evangelization is not necessarily evangelism as we know it is evangelism but not 
one-on-one -on -one preaching and sharing tracts. We will never win souls that way till Jesus comes. The key to transgenerational impact and bringing territories to the submission of the Christ is hidden in one word, influence. 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 The mystery word that holds the key to compelling generations to come to the Lordship of Christ. Everybody say influence. Influence will do more than tracts will do. Influence will do more than crusades will do. Influence. At every given point in your life, your decisions, your values are being altered by someone you look up to as a role model. Consciously or unconsciously. And therefore the key to bringing earth, our territories, cosmos, to the obedience of Christ is ascending intentionally to a position of kingdom influence that grants us access to the minds of people and that they can, by our influence, buy into our ideology which seeks to enthrone Christ as king. This is the gospel. The gospel is not just a message that saves sinners. The gospel is an ideology like a terrorist ideology. The gospel is an ideology that seeks to enthrone Christ and his purpose. First, that spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. Then, the influence of his jurisdiction across the strata of society. If we are not doing this, there is no reason why we should be alive. No matter what kind of conference, convention, impartation, if it does not lead to what I just told you, then it's a waste. The summary of all that I just said is called kingdom advancement. The intentional strategic frontiering of the influence of the Christ in the earth. This is consistent with the eternal plan of God. What is the eternal plan of God? According to Colossians, that all things be headed up in the Christ. And I told you that that plan of God, all mankind and creation will come to the submission of the Christ. By a principle called the reflection principle. The reflection principle. An entity confers power on another as a proof of his might and royalty. The mystery of the sun and the moon. The moon does not have a glory of its own. It reflects the glory of the sun. If you want to see the excellency of the brightness of the sun, you look at the moon. The degree to which the moon aligns with the sun is the degree to which it it shines hallelujah christianity is not just a religion to keep you busy until jesus comes christianity is not just a religion to keep you until you get a job or until you graduate or until you get married christianity is an ideology the faith life is an ideology it's a movement it's a cause there is something we are doing. God has an intention in his mind. And he expects every inhabitant in the earth to be given an opportunity to understand that. His emphasis right now is building his spiritual kingdom in the hearts of men. And that's what we call being born again. The establishment of the reign and the rule of the Christ in the hearts of men. Not just coming for altar call. Cult, altar call is not enough to get you born again. It gets you saved. But to be born anew and to be transformed, the Christ needs to be established in your heart. The degree to which the word of God finds expression in your life, the degree to which you have submitted to the principles of the kingdom, is the degree to which Jesus has become Lord of your life. Are we, are we understanding? One of the biggest limitations I, I taught us that there are two major limitations to the advancement of the kingdom. That the first, the Bible calls it the gate of hell. That is just a recap. And I told us that the gate of hell defines the scope of Satan and every arsenal that he brings. His tricks, his strategies that he brings to bring the whole world into deception. But that's not even the biggest limitation. The biggest of all limitations is the mind. Our mental alignment to the ways of the kingdom. This is what is responsible for your prosperity. This is what is responsible for your impact. 
This is what is responsible for the flow of God's power. Now, preachers have erroneously taught people. Every time you talk about the mind, preachers shift people to, they shift that topic to business people and entrepreneurs and, and um, um, proprietors and all those who have to deal with the corporate life. So here they are sweating and believing they are training their spirit. Whenever you talk about mind, they say, no, 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 it's, it's, it's all right. I'm not a businessman. The mind is the access point for the spirit to find expression in your life. You ignore your mental development. You ignore the alignment of your mind to the government of the Christ. You will fail in life in every respect. I can never change you until I change your mind. I can never change you till I alter your ideology because your life revolves around your thinking, around your perception about life. There's nothing I can do about your current situation until you are willing to submit your mind to something better. It's God speaking to us. So let's read Proverbs 23. Verse 7. Help us, Holy Spirit. One to read. Just the first phrase. You don't need to read all of those ones down. One to read. For as he thinketh in his heart or in his mind, so is he. It equates the summation of your ideologies to the quality of your life. Meaning the quality of my life as an ambassador of the kingdom, as a husband, as a father, as a leader, is dependent on my, the sum total of the ideologies that inform my decisions. Profound truth. Profound truth. That a man's life is helplessly at the mercy of his mindset. I've done many teachings about mindsets and I will not stop until a transition happens. The key to persuasion is repetition. Not information. Repetition. When a truth is repeated, it, it becomes a priority to you. And that's the goal of this teaching. God is doing a mighty work in your life. God is transforming mighty man in this place. And he won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. He won't stop, no, he won't stop till his church looks like him. He won't stop, he won't stop till you look just like him. You know why I must preach this? Because seated where you are is the destiny of thousands that have been connected to your grace and your life. And your refusal to rise will make thousands to go to hell. Millions to perish. Imagine if there was no Benny Hinn. Imagine if there was no Reinhard Bonke. Right? Imagine if all of the mighty men that have brought great impact in this generation did not rise. I refuse to let your tears stop me. I refuse to let your anger with me stop me. I will teach it until that transformation happens. You may not see a need to thank me now. But as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives. When you see the excellency of your life above that of your contemporaries. You will find a reason to say Lord I thank you. The training process is always difficult. Because mankind has been designed to live in a comfort zone. We are designed to live around an environment that massages our current level. But every time the word begins to come, the first thing that happens is your current mentality will resist it. Because it knows that it will have to choose to accept that it is wrong and change. And accepting faults is one of the biggest um, ego stinging things for mankind to say, oh, I'm wrong. I may not have gotten it well this way. So we prefer to excuse it away and remain. Friends live together 
for as long as they think together. The moment one begins to think above, the environment starts driving him away. Right? I'm challenging you because there's something about your life. Koinonia is an apostolic platform. Only with the eye of the spirit will you see the kind of mighty men that have been raised. There are more people. This crowd constitutes only less than 10% of the total people who will listen to this message. And so I'm speaking to nations. I'm speaking to individuals. I'm speaking to territories. Somebody will be listening to this message who is lying down at the end of his life and say, God, is this how my life will be? And God is saying there is a way out. The way out is not giving you money. The way out is not parting you when you do not deserve to be parted. The way out is to prune and build and to furnish. It may cost you tears. But let me tell you, anybody that loves you, see, a mentor, a mentor is not your friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? I taught the school of ministry students that there are three spiritual platforms on which reception and impartation happens. Number one, a father and a son platform. A transfer from a father to a son. Number two, a transfer from a mentor to a mentee or an apprentice. Number three, a transfer from a teacher to a student. You cannot transfer knowledge from colleague to colleague. No, sir. It's against the law of impartation. That means every time you want to receive, one must assume the position of the greater and another the lesser. Even if it is for the purpose of the impartation. Are you getting what I'm saying? So by the time, because many of us may watch people, if Pastor Jakes comes up right now to preach, I will not just stand and say, I'm the great man of God, he's my friend. No, I submit myself immediately to the grace that is teaching and immediately I begin to receive. Are you learning something? Society will teach you otherwise. That's why there are lots of failures outside. Let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you listen to what I am giving you and you sit down honestly under these teachings, you will never, never be a disappointment to the kingdom. I give you that as a guarantee. But the problem is to what degree are we willing to submit ourselves to the dealings of God? To what degree? Every time we come to God, many of us come with our bag of errors and we sit down hoping that God will add to us. Sometimes he doesn't need to add. He needs to take from you because what you currently have is what is destroying you. There is an ideology that is resisting the power of God in your life. There is an ideology that is resisting the move of the spirit. There is an ideology that is limiting your financial life. There is an ideology that is limiting your ministry, limiting every aspect of your life. And when you contend for light and you receive that light, no power in existence has the capacity to keep you down, not for too long. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As I walk around, as I travel around, I've had the privilege of traveling to different territories. I study culture a lot. In fact, whenever we travel for administration, if time allows us, we always take a little tour around the city to see the way of life of the people. I like to study how people think. I like to study what their priorities are. I like to study what, what constitutes a taboo for them. What is the scope of their ideology? And I am amazed. I see the reason why Africa is where it is. I see the reason why very few men out of a large crowd ever, ever touch the true grace of God in their lives. I see the reason why though many go to school and graduate, they end up failures. Failures from the perspective of the kingdom. Failures in impacting their generation and being relevant for the kingdom. I see why zealous people will start out well and end as if God left them. There is something that we consistently violate. And that is the power of transformation. The power of transformation. The power of transformation. I can't tell you this enough, Koinonia. Listen to me. The power of transformation. You can rise from where you are. I don't care what the limitations are. 
Stop regretting what you are going through and what your father brought you into or what your mother brought you into and concentrate on the transformation that will bring you up. Otherwise, you will sit in that position of regret and watch your children later join you. That's what has happened. We have a generation of irresponsible people. Spiritually irresponsible. Mentally irresponsible. Physically irresponsible. There has been a transgenerational game of blaming people. One generation blaming another for their failures. One generation blaming another. Nigerians blame government. Africans blame their parents. They blame institutions. Our refusal to turn and say, what can I do to live where I am? Gideon was a little boy who was hiding. He heard of the miracles that happened. And now he was there reduced and an angel appears to him and says, Oh thou mighty man of value, can you be the changer of this pattern in a generation? Let me tell you something. My message will mean very little to you and you will hate me if you are someone with a mindset that believes someone somewhere is responsible for your success and your advancement if you have that kind of mindset here your first assignment tonight is repent can we have the windows open i think the rain is hallelujah everyone say in the name of jesus i take full responsibility for my current position spiritually financially socially i take full responsibility and i am willing to pay the price to change that pattern say one more time in the name of jesus i refuse resentment i refuse blaming people i make up my mind that from today i take full responsibility for the outcome of everything in my life that's right that's the, the decision that begins to change your life you say this among your colleagues and they will insult you some of you are even feeling nervous as you are saying this because it is very comfortable to believe your father is the reason why you are not serving God that foolish man was a herbalist but what of the mercy of God that has brought you to see the light There are many ladies who believe it's the wrong training of their mothers that has stopped them from marriage. There are many people who believe. There are preachers, there are many pastors in different ministries who believe that the reason why they are not rising is because the geo or the man of God is not laying hands on them to do impartation. My challenge to you before we continue is that language of responsibility. Please pray in one minute. Say, Lord, I make up my mind. Pray, pray, open your mouth. Don't just pray in your heart. Willingly and consciously before heaven, this day, this day, this day, the 22nd of May, I make up my mind that from today, I begin to take full responsibility for the outcome of my life. If any change will happen, it depends on you and God. If your generation must hear your voice, it depends on you and God. Pray. 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 I choose to be different. I come from a family where no one has reason. Excuses here and there. We are from Kogi State, that's why. Excuses here and there. We are from the north, that's why. Excuses here and there. My father was a drunkard. My mother was a prostitute. I was born out of wedlock. Kill that excuse. It's a deception from the pit of hell. 
Manda kala brandi gele boko so brandi geri ataba hashara balara bara 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 bara. I'm a lady. That's why they should take care of me. Kill that excuse. I have failed. That's why I tried and failed. Kill that excuse. I gave God a chance and He didn't do anything. Kill that excuse. Hallelujah. Listen. Never try to waste your time. I'm giving you an advice that will bless you. Never try to waste your time investing in people who have not come to a point where they are willing to take responsibility for their lives. You will be casting your pearl before swine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Never waste your time and energy attempting to communicate truths to people who have not indicated a genuine passion for transformation. You will waste your time. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh in his heart. The summation of my ideologies. So I believe my father is a wicked man. Because he would have sold the car and given me the money. Because I had to fend for school for myself. And that ideology becomes your template of interpreting life. Hallelujah. Let me share a few things. Your mindset determines your response to God, to people, to Satan, to challenges, and to success. Your mindset, your ideologies determines your response to God, people, Satan, challenges, and ultimately success. The Bible keeps telling us again and again, Solomon, speaking again and again and encouraging believers of the need to guard our heart. God is in it. Let's look at that scripture very quickly. Proverbs chapter, I believe, 4. 4 verse 23. Am I right? 4 verse 23. Let's look at it quickly. Yes. It says, keep your heart with all what? Diligence, seriousness, tenacity. It says, for out of it are the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen to me. Please look at me. I submit to you. I have seen people suffer. I have seen the bitter weep that the negligence to this truth will bring to any life and bring to any family you can choose to listen to what I am telling you and contend for change or you can stand where you are and watch life whip you until you lose your faith, lose your salvation and ultimately end up in hell is that serious keep your heart it is your responsibility keep your heart with all diligence for out of it out of your ideologies are the issues, the decisions that frame your life and destiny. Your mindset about culture, your mindset about women, your mindset about God, your mindset about money and prosperity, your mindset about increase, your mindset about hard work and diligence. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you. Wishing has never changed the life of any man. Wishing only, only gives you a false emotional consolation. Oh, I wish I would be anointed like Pastor James. Oh, I wish I would be able to do this. Oh, I wish that God would use me. I know he will use me one day. Forget that deceit. 
there is what you do here and now that makes you know whether you are usable or otherwise. Let me give you a little preview into the financial series that we're going to be having. In it, I teach on the power of decisions. Do you know the difference between a decision and a wish? This is it. I want to drink water. It's a decision. That's the water there. I want to drink water. It's a wish. Or a strong desire. I decide to drink water. Means I set it as a goal. And I am ready to find out what it takes to get that water. Are you seeing that now? A decision is different from a desire in that a decision is backed up with the willingness to satisfy the conditions to get that result. Many people wish for the anointing. Oh, I wish, I wish. Many people wish for a big church. Many people wish for a million naira or million dollar status. I'm a millionaire in the name of Jesus Christ. No power will stop me. Uh, stories. This is why people look at Christian and things they think we are idiots because we keep fooling and kidding ourselves again and again. Say, I decide to make impact. I decide to be relevant. I decide to do big things for the kingdom. Hallelujah your heart with all diligence. Why? Because your life is a reflection of, of, of your ideologies. I've taught this, but let me recap on it again very quickly. Remember I told you that there is a law, the law of manifestation. And that law is that your physical reality eventually becomes a reflection of your mindset. The inner workings of your mind is what will eventually become your physical reality. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means your physical life is a revelation of the summation or the quality of your ideologies. By and large, your mentality about prosperity will show physically. By and large, your mentality about God and the principles of the kingdom will show. By and large, your mentality about marriage will show in children calling you a loving daddy or a stupid Dracula who is killing them. By and large. By and large, your mentality about success and productivity will speak otherwise. Meaning, our physical environment right now is a gradual reflection of the reality in our mind. Are you getting what I'm saying? Watch this. Compare a general overseer of a ministry or president or whatever. Key, or let me use a, a term that is now. Compare a CEO, right? Of a company who sits down in a large office. You know how intimidating the office can be. With AC, flat screen, right? All kinds of things. Cup of coffee, tea, all kinds of things. And a secretary around. And you see the poor people in the company angry at their director, wicked man. He's the one enjoying. And the megad is there opening gates hundreds of times a day and receiving 10 or 15,000. And the megad convinces himself that the ogre is not fair. This man is not doing anything. He just sits down on a chair, signs papers, writes a few things, and he's getting millions. My challenge is this. Transfer them for two months. Transfer them. Meaning... Tell the may God, we hereby give you this office. It's yours for two months. And tell the ogre, go to the gate. The ogre is going to do something in that gate that will make people stop coming to the office. They will start waiting at the gate. There is a mentality. Are you getting my point? He's going to look and say, is there something we can do? Is there something we can do? Right there at the gate, he will start consultancy services. Right there at the gate, you will think and say, how can I reduce this effort? How can I reduce the physical effort? And then he may create a chain or a rope where he just sits down and drive or try to make a digital gate. Are you seeing that now? 
whereas the other man sits down holding one wood and metallic detector and, 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 and a, the keys, bunch of keys to a gate. Meanwhile, let's go to our man in the office there. The man is in the office and when he sits down, the next thing is he opens the fridge, sees apples, dates, all kinds of things and he says, my soul find rest. He forgets. No, no, no. See how cheap his mindset is. He forgets that that company is at the mercy of his decisions and he's eating and quickly he sees some little money and he carries that money quickly and hides it and he thinks, what can I sell quickly? And they say, oh, God, generator has spoiled. He say, leave it there. In two months, that office becomes his mindset. Are you seeing that now? You come in and see dirty, scattered. They've sold a lot of things. They've sold the company generator. They've done all sorts of things. Right? Workers are not paid. Whereas you find out that the, the blessed man, the CEO, has changed the gate. And he will make it become something. What is the difference? Their mindset. They think the difference is money. They think the difference is expensive suits and expensive cars. No. Those things are a reflection of something. When you see a man mightily used by God, his life is a reflection of something. Are, are, we, are we following? Are we together? The next time you see a man you consider to be anointed or blessed, do not envy what you see. Try to buy into their mind and transfer it to yourself and your life will follow suit. Are we blessed? That's why success is, is transferable. If I can transfer to you what is in my mind, you will be like me. But you will stop at my limit. If I can transfer to you what I have and challenge you to rise higher, you will be higher than me. You see that? Preachers preach out of the abundance of their mindset. A preacher who is not, for instance, an entrepreneur and knows nothing about leadership and organization has a pattern that he teaches people. All he would tell people is, just pray and be serious. The God of favor, God of honor, God of this, the God who located me will locate you and the people shout amen. And they stop there and they become a congregation of weak and beggarly people. The preacher himself, not knowing why he's successful, he thinks he's successful because he's preaching. No. Guard your heart. There is a mentality you have right now that is stopping friends from you. There are some of you, you can never have friends because there are certain mindsets and ideologies that drive every destiny helper who comes into your life. Something about you resents people from you. And if you do not take the time to study it and change and say, I'm like that. My mother never had any friend, only me. You see it, the transference. Let me talk about two quick ideologies or mental attitudes that have sponsored failure in the lives of people. Right? Number one is the mindset that bets what we know today to be low self-esteem. Write that word down. It's very important. I'm about to say something that will bless you. Shabbat Shabbat what is low self-esteem or what we call complex? Please look up. Low self-esteem is the feeling or the mindset that brings a man to a position where he believes or he is convinced consciously or subconsciously that you are not good enough, that you are perpetually at a state of disadvantage. That there is always something you need to do to your life to meet up to a standard. A status quo. Are you getting my point? It's a terrible mindset. A terrible mental state of being. Because it produces dangerous fruits. And we're about to see a few of them. 
Let me tell you, the foolishness of many people in society, from preachers to businessmen to fathers to leaders, is motivated by this poisonous mindset. Subtle but dangerous. Low self-esteem. What does low self-esteem do? Low self-esteem, when it is matured in a man, becomes the sponsor for an extravagant life becomes the sponsor for aggression and looking down on people becomes the sponsor uh, for downplaying people as a way of trying to show your relevance so all that fight for titles all that fight for recognition all that impatience that drives people into living an extravagant life is primarily because of a deep-seated mentality of low self-esteem are we blessed so a lady believes that until she plants a particular kind of hair she can be beautiful and guys will not see her wherever she got that ideology and then she finds out that the weave on is 15,000 and that becomes a goal she's under pressure borrowing money trying to prove all kinds of things and then when she buys it and puts it she's hoping that now she has been able to attain a status quo is God speaking to us so we have preachers with their clubs and societies right that is based on something they believe they have to do to match up so a man of God thinks I can teach but I can't prophesy and his complex begins to sponsor him to look for prophetic grace anyhow are you getting my point even to the point of witchcraft and when he gets it, he now believes that when that prophetic grace is added to me, I will be like so, so, so man of God. Are you seeing that now? A poisonous mindset. This is what is responsible for the hatred of brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. A father will fight with his wife because the father believes that this woman is a CEO and I am an assistant director. And his complex makes him feel do something to bring her down. Are we blessed now? Low self-esteem. A mindset that stops people from moving and taking the path to success gradually. Low self-esteem has been the reason for incessant impatience, especially in young people. They want to buy the car now. They want to marry now. Right? They want sharp, sharp money now. Sharp, sharp success. You want to start a ministry and in four months, have a record-breaking 5,000 crowd. Low self-esteem. To prove. And you say, go and tell them in the village, God is at work here. You see that? Tell who? Them. That means there is a them you have been working for. There is somebody that you say, I must show this man that I am nothing. It's not enough reason. Is God helping us. Many of us have lost precious friends because of low self-esteem. Our low self-esteem makes us to interpret even a sincere compliment from a negative angle. Because you believe that you must do something to match up. Who is God speaking to tonight? We have all sorts of enemies and all sorts of people. I look at people who I know at the level I am now, I cannot even wear the clothes they are wearing. And some of them are students. You know that God just blessed them and opened a small door for them. But that low self-esteem, especially ladies, sisters, say amen. Especially these ladies. You will see a tiny lady moving around. Self-esteem is pushing her and she goes to meet an un one big ungodly military officer. You know that she can destroy her life because she wants to say, I am going out with somebody in Jaji. Right? And that... Oh, you think I don't know. You are joking. <laughs> Is God speaking to us? There are many preachers. They start preaching now. And they say, Kai, if I go, they won't, they, won't, they won't know that. They won't acknowledge me. So let me start going on air. And the grace to go on air has not been released. So the resources to back it up is not there. And they keep yoking their members week after week. There are business people who start a business now and they say they want to do international business. They go and die in Italy or go and die in Brazil. Right? Low self-esteem. Being a motivation for many things. That's why you see preachers. Come, please. 
Look at men of God, for instance. When another man of God is about to see one, everybody is standing to see who will greet who as a proof, right? Meaning that the one who greets one is accepted. You see, we carry our villages, we carry our pain, we carry our backgrounds, mix it with the anointing, mix it with ministry, and off we go misleading many people. So he comes to me and then I cannot greet him. There are geos who will never turn and greet their people and just say, God bless you. How are you? No. Because if how can I greet him? You greet my boy. You see that? Your village is haunting you. Your background is haunting you. A poisonous mindset haunting you. Don't just laugh. I'm, I'm serious, very serious as I speak here. There are ladies who believe they have to behave in a certain way to show they are not cheap. If, I, if you talk softly to guys, they will joke with you, give it to them and they will respect you. That's your mentality. So God brought your husband 10 times and you drove him 10 times. Because something in your mind, you live around the mediocre just like you in the room. And all of them convince themselves. It's amazing how we mess up and people clap for us. You do something very stupid that demands flogging. And you go and meet people who think like you. And they say, Kai guy, you represented us. <laughs> Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Listen, listen. You can decide to make up your mind and change. Or live in that false sense of success. There are some of us moving around lying to people. Oh, we are millionaires. We are this and that and that. We are this and that and that. You carry your friend's car. You say it's, it's your car. You, you find that? All of those things. Some of us are sitting right now. Aside from maybe you just beg somebody. The clothes you are wearing is not your own. The watch you are wearing is not your own. The shoe you are wearing is not your own. The phone you are using is not your own. You borrowed your friend's phone for three days. What for? What's the point? What are you proving? An Android device? Shame on you. If that becomes the whole circumference upon which your life revolves in. That mankind, we make ourselves too cheap. And so we do not celebrate what we are and where we are. We do not celebrate what God is doing in our lives. We rush levels. We are not thorough in the dealings of God in our lives. And we end up with casualties. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. That mindset of inferiority right now is what has made some people not to relate with certain friends that can help them. Because you think this person is a villager. My, if, I, if I react like that, no, 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 no. There are some of us, if somebody looks at you in the secret place and speaks his language, not just to mock you, but just a nice conversation. Let's connect. You say, please don't embarrass me here. Please. I've told people my, my, I'm half cast. My father is from where and where. Don't come and, 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 and fall my hand here. Hallelujah. I once was talking to a preacher and he looked at me. And I said, do I know how much his, his suit is that he was wearing? And I was shocked. In the middle of a destiny molding conversation, you stop me and ask me how much your suit is what? What in the world is that? I just, the anointing just lifted. I just knew that there's nothing to tell this person. Say in the name of Jesus, I am proud of my level. I will rise gradually. There's no point trying to fake success. I will pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Very important. Low self-esteem. Many of us here are suffering from it. Is what is responsible for gossip. Is what is responsible for backbiting. That spirit, that feeling of low self-esteem is the attitude that will sponsor your not celebrating the success of others. So the moment Mary says, I just bought a Jeep. 
Say, Mary, what a G. Where did she get the money from? Mary, Mary, that I know. Something is fishy. I must find out. Find out what? And you see, when you are determined to find out things, you will always find something. Is that true? Low self-esteem. Number two. Is the mindset that leads to what I call an uncultured use of words. Uncultured use of words. Psalms 141 verse 3. An uncultured use of words. God is helping us tonight. An uncultured use of words. Psalm 141 verse what? Psalm 141 verse 3. Everyone read. One to read. He said, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Look at me. There are many of us right now where you are seated. The devil of your destiny, that which has chained you and made nonsense out of your life, is this gate called your lips. Hallelujah. The gate of uncultured words. Many of us have killed the dreams of people because we spoke something to them. Many of us have destroyed the destinies of people because we spoke words. Many of us have torn friends apart because of an uncultured word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know that these decoration people, there's a way they behave? Uncultured words. Many of us have had witchcraft attack because our mouth introduced us to things we should keep. Ah, do you know, see that lady, that fine one, the other one, that very fine one, that's my wife. In fact, I'm even planning, I think I should get to Germany, hopefully. There's one morning I'm waiting, and while you are talking, the elder is nodding. Say, where did you even say you are going again? Say, Germany. Everything has been working. All of a sudden, everything scatters. Our mouth. There are many of us, you plan to buy a car in 10 years. You have, I'm not saying confession of faith. Telling people, look, in fact, right now, the last time we went to Kotonou, and it's a lie pressure to say things that should not be set a watch put a gate oh god in my mouth that i will know when to speak nobody mocked you because they did not know you were barren you carried your mouth running it around telling people and saying don't tell anybody for what say i don't know you don't tell anybody it's me that said benga's wife this and that and that happened How we have put ourselves in trouble because we cannot shut our mouths. Are you getting what I'm saying? It was you that revealed to an armed robber that 10 million came into your father's account. They came, broke his head, broke your house, broke everything, broke the safe, removed the money. And he said, Kai, this world is a wicked world. Set a guard over my mouth. Let me tell you, you must learn to know when to speak and went to keep quiet. Many of you have made fools out of yourself because your father came and met you and said, I'm leaving your mother. And instead of you to be matured, you say, leave her, Jared. She's a wicked woman. Only for you to hear her own side. And she said, there's something I've not told you. Your father has been cheating on me from the day you were born. I've been enduring. And then you stand stupefied because you have backed your father and ran your mouth against your mother. Are you getting what I'm saying? The height of mental maturity in terms of communication is when you know when to speak and when to keep quiet. When to speak and when to keep quiet. Some of you people come to you for counseling and say, I've been fornicating or I've been suffering from masturbation. I've been doing immediately. You feel you say, ah, God is changing life. So say, what happens? Say, Man, the rate at which masturbation is disturbing people. I can't, ah, ah some brothers that you don't even expect you see that keep a watch oh god over my mouth keep a watch a guy came and met you and said look oh um i'm i'm, I'm we're going to get married let me just calm down i'm trusting god for some finances to come before you knew it you have sent text to 11 ladies you chief bridesmaid you this and then later the guy will say i'm not doing and the friend say how far our marriage hey, god is working and you are under pressure because you've run your mouth saying what you should not say 
the Bible says, a word spoken in due season. There is a due season for communication. Is God helping us? Mindsets. 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 Many of our parents go and run their mouths in the villages. Oh, I've been promoted. I'm a millionaire now. In fact, the last check entered and they said there's one village project. Please, we're allocating the task of 5 million naira to you. And you see that the children are crying and suffering. And the man is building a community somewhere because your mouth, your mouth destroyed you. One time, one lady came and met me. She thought it was good news. Very respectable um, man of God that she was going out with. And I think one time, I don't know, let me assume the guy was carried away and he wanted to make advances on her and do a lot of things. And you know, she advised him and at the end, he felt bad. He said, look, I don't know what came over me. Let's pray this and that. And then she came to talk to me. And she, she thought it was going to be a good news. She says, honestly, I need to tell you something. It's not every man of God that is a man of God. Though. I knew where she was going to. I listened to her. Uh, there are some things you don't come to me for. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And then she came and met me. That ah, this and that and that. This person did this. Can I imagine that this person did this? She was so disappointed. She's still been disappointed. She still did this. And I said, shame on you. One. Because you were, was it not in a room? Was it outside? It happened. You went to the room. You were also tempted. You will not accept that part of your role. The role you played in seducing him. You, are you saying you did not see the advancement coming? You were enjoying the attention until it got to the limit where you think you can take it. Is that not how it happens? It was holding you, doing all kinds of things. You were enjoying it. When you felt it would now cross the boundary, what you call boundary, you now started talking and you are coming to report him rather than praying and humble yourself. I'm not justifying immorality. I'm talking about the foolishness of unguarded, uncultured communication. And the way she was talking to me, I know she has told more than hundreds of people right there. And you, you, you destroy. Now, listen. We are very disciplined people by the grace of God in this ministry. Are you getting what I'm saying? But it, many people have run down the churches and the ministry of others because of certain things. Especially this immorality thing. People come for counseling and they talk. They say all kinds of things. They say you are the... I, I remember one lady who met me and said, um, you are the only man of God in a long time who has talked to me without sleeping with me. I said, it's a sign that you need deliverance. While you are concentrating and saying people are doing this, there is a wicked spirit at work in you that is destroying people. Rather than thinking you are so seductive, you better find out that the hand of God needs to come upon your life to change it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Unguarded communication unguarded communications matters that don't concern you it's amazing you hear people talking about their father talking about their mother talking about their sister a lady met me and said ah that uh, her sister just got married though sharp sharp she's now pregnant i say shut your mouth you are you, you can imagine the stupidity of your communication look at what drives your mind Look, I'm teaching you this because it will save you trouble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you are hated by people right now because you have joined the heads of too many people, including your destiny helpers. Every time they mention your name to live to, people say, may God forbid. i rather die than to give this person a job. This person is a destroyer of destiny. Have you seen people like that? You come in between two people who are in a relationship and you say, my brother, I'm a Christian, no. Uh, I won't hide this thing from you. There's something I want to tell you about this lady. I saw the way you are blind flower and blind f buying flower and all of these things. All these things you are doing. What is this lady has been rocking her life since she was 13? You are just coming innocently. You don't know. You you think she's a nice lady. And the guy said, eh. Well, I'm not saying she has HIV, but who knows? If there's something, go for a test. Mount. Some of us listen. Mindset, listen to me. It's not just to say we want to be successful. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember when Benny Hinn had his scandal, for instance. Many people in the body of Christ did not stay to find out what happened. Everybody started moving, running down Benny Hinn. The following Sunday, many pastors were preaching. When they said they caught him with Paula White. Right now, that Creflo Dollar, 
You see it on, on news that Creflodola asked his congregation to buy him 65 million naira jet. That's not true. That's not what happened. Are you seeing that now? Everybody, those who have been angry, there are people angry today that Kenneth Copeland is flying his jet. There are people angry at all kinds of, of, of things. And we run our mouth. We say all kinds of things. People have called their mothers witches. Called their fathers witches. Listen, give yourself a warning and discipline your mouth. And say, Lord, keep my mouth shut when it needs to be shut. And to speak when it needs to speak. Hallelujah. Unguarded communications. They tell a man of God, lead offering. And he comes and says, uh, as I was leading the offering, the Lord said this, stand up. To mean that he wants to show that he's a man of God. And you spend one hour just for offering. Unguarded use of your mouth. You just disgrace yourself and threw yourself in ashes. Are we growing tonight? Some of these issues look little. But this is what makes leaders out of people. Notice that leaders are calm people. They are people who evaluate things. They are people who look into things. Because one day, somebody is going to say something about your life, your ministry, your business, something. Is that true? I remember when one woman, I think somebody met me and said one woman was saying this koinonia we emphasize the holy spirit not jesus he said that's witchcraft that's signs of the end time and the person was hoping that i would respond to it and i just kept quiet i said glory be to jesus and that was the end of it because sometimes i pray for you in the name of the lord jesus that may you not run your mouth in the presence of your enemy and give him the key to destroy your life From the abundance of your heart your mouth speaks and then it ruins your life and then you close doors of destiny over your life many things have been shot in our lives because of these mindsets there are many others but i decided to pick two to talk about still the mental transformation that god will raise people in this place who are leaders indeed Somebody comes to gossip to you and immediately he finishes the gossiping about Tosin. You tell the person, let's hold hands and pray for her. And the person is tongue and embarrassed and doesn't know what to do. Tomorrow they mark you as a real Christian. Do you know why many preachers' messages are not strong on the pulpit? They know you outside of pulpit. They know your life of gossiping and backbiting. They know your insincerity in handling the things of the kingdom. And so when you say God will bless you, the words are little. They don't carry weight. May God give you the gift of a friend that has discipline with words. May God give you the gift of a friend that will use his words to bless you. You may not understand the implication of what I'm teaching you. Well, I don't want us to just say, Lord, send the rain. I'm teaching you practical issues that will make you exceptional. People will look at your life and your ideologies will be compelling. And people will come and say, why? What is, what is the framework of your mind? And you will let them know that the Lord Jesus Christ has transformed your life. You will see jobs you did not apply for come to you only because you, of your calmness. Everything is not just about your certificate. You will find out when you finish that it takes more than certificate to reign. It's God speaking to us. Preachers, God cannot trust you with innocent people because you cannot hear their cases and keep quiet. God cannot trust you with, with all kinds of people. There are pastors, God cannot trust them with large members because the day you know that one member is a billionaire, that day, everybody in the church will know that this guy is a billionaire and they will strangle him everybody will come and say we are soliciting for financial support and run him down because he gave you tight of his billion there are people in this place seated who are dangerously prosperous don't think everybody is struggling there are people seated quietly here i know them There are people here who are dangerously anointed. Graced of God. There are people here whose parents, if you know the status, 
the societal status of their parents, you won't even go and knock their office, yet they are calm and quiet. The day I found out that one of our ladies here was the daughter of one prominent man, I was shocked. I was shocked at the humility and simplicity of that lady. The day I found out that this big man, this is the daughter, I said, my goodness, what humility. There are some of us. Your, your father was given caretaker or something of a local government and, and you wouldn't let anybody rest. I know that I'm hard on us tonight, but it's because I love you. I want to make leaders out of us. Not just men who are tongue talkers, but people who have the wisdom for living. Are you getting what I'm saying? Never sit down and entertain gossip. Be the one to drive that atmosphere away so that God will come and bless you. Never be the one. Let it not be your room that when they want to run down people, your room is the place where they meet. Say, let's meet at, at uh, that usual joint. And when you come, say, hey, before they reach, say, sit down first. Let me be serving you minerals as you do it. No. Let your room be the place where when you talk of destiny, when someone's life is down, he says, I know that I will go to Sam's house. Because if I can find my way there, I will find God. I will find hope. My neighbor has one friend that I told her in my, she may be here listening to me. In my opinion, that is one of the nicest women I have met in my life. And the most sincere woman. That my neighbor's friend. I've seen my neighbor two times when you know our regular human activities challenges. She shared her testimony here. And that woman will come to her and kneel down and pray and cry. She will come and see my neighbor washing and come immediately and collect the clothes and wash for her. I, there was a time she came, there was nobody. You know, sometimes I lock my door and you wouldn't know I'm around. She came in and there was nobody. Do you know what she did? She laid her hands on my neighbor's door and started weeping and said, Lord, will you open the door for my friend and bless my friend? She didn't know I was listening. Hi. I said, oh God, will you give our people in Koinonia wives like this? How many of you can be that true that you use your words well only to bless? Will you make up your mind that beginning from today, I will set a guard over my mouth. My mouth will not be the reason why I would destroy the life of another. Anything that proceeds from my mouth will only be that which carries blessings. In Israel, if you curse somebody, they will kill you because they understand the implication of words. Is God speaking to us tonight? Many of us have made ourselves cheap. When you started out, people respected you because you were a man of few words. Right now, you have become a talkative and gradually you see that your respect has been going down. Have you seen people like that? One moment they are rest. In fact, when they come, they say, sir, good afternoon. At the end of the conversation, the woman said, okay, my son, I've heard about you. Whereas when you came, she said, okay, man of God, I, I covet the grace upon your life, but you threw away your honor. Everybody write this word down, honor. Honor. These are the principles that bring honor to your life. Value honor more than money. Value honor more than reputation. Money cannot give you honor, but honor will give you blessings. Honor. The ability to recognize and reward your difference is what we call honor. Uncommon principles that will make you exceptional. Tonight's teaching may look simple, but it is indeed powerful. As a man thinketh, your mindset. I'm doing a re-engineering in our mind. A recalibration. Changing our perceptions from our various cultural standpoints and connecting us to the attitude of the kingdom. That which makes kings. That which makes nobles. That which makes men wise. That which opens cheap doors for greatness. Two more things and we are going to pray. How do I engage? I've said it, but then I will say it again and again. 
how do I engage in renewing my mind when I find out that there is something flawed in my life? How do I start? Now I found out that I have a poisonous communication. Now I found out that I'm a bitter and envious person. I found out that I'm a jealous person. Negative dimension of jealousy. I found out that I'm suffering a lot of complex. I found out that I'm suffering failure and defeat. How do I begin to rise? Number one, you must admit and accept that you desire that there, there is a need for transformation in that area of your life. Transformation will never come till you are humble enough to accept. There are some of us here, God has been blessing us with all kinds of financial blessings. But something about our mindset keeps throwing money out of our lives. Favor brings money to your life. Wisdom throws it out of your life. There are many of us who ministerial doors open up to us, but the people never call us back because there is something about our mindset. You go to preach in a church. You don't study the way the church setting is. You just stand and run your mouth and say anything, anyhow to anybody. You go to a church that is predominantly elders. Your packaging and communication must suit the context of your audience. You go to a church that is filled with intellectuals. I've preached in all kinds of churches. And they like me. I've preached in all kinds of places. Because I pay the price to understand the people I'm communicating to. It's God speaking to us. So God opened the door of ministry. You now went to preach. You were preaching in, in, a, in a military cantonment. And you were speaking as if you were talking to market women. Because you did not know how to communicate her right. And they said, please, don't bring this man again. This man came to embarrass us. Our ogre was here. We thought God would glorify himself. God glorified himself. But this man, Kai, don't bring him again. And the door closes. And you see a man, six months, they've not called you to bless anybody. Not because you are not anointed. You have the anointing. But these mental adjustments. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of us, somebody comes to your life. And the mindset of courtesy and greeting the person. You just come and say, I am apostle, so, 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 and so this and that and that. There was a young man that was standing well, while I returned from the trip, I was, I just ran to quickly refresh and come and the young man just stood there and I was asking the protocol, why is this guy here? He said he came for prayer. I said, by this time, this is Koinonia, I can't see you now. He said, I've been coming and every time I come, I find out that your door is locked. So I decided to come now and stay. You see that? On a very good day, I would have said, so it's like nobody has introduced me to you, Abi. Protocol, can you let him know the kind of no, 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 no. Yes, he did what was wrong, but at least solve the problem at that point since he's there and bless him and then show him the right way to do it. That guy now will live loving me more, but he can live hating me and say, This person, he's going right there to go and preach, but this is a soul dying. So it's your genuine test for souls, true. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Little foxes, brothers and sisters, spoil the vine. Little adjustments that we need to make to our lives to make us exceptional. Many of us are anointed, no doubt. But many of us cannot reign because the wisdom that makes for dominion, the wisdom that makes men exceptional, the wisdom that makes people extraordinary is deficient in our lives. That mental adjustment. One more time, lay your hands on your head. And say, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to make the required adjustments for my greatness. I make up my mind to contend for change and contend for adjustment. I make up my mind to lay aside the old and to pick up the new. Hallelujah. I told you two more things. Write it down very quickly. Number one, two more things I'm adding to what I've said that will make you exceptional. The attitude of courtesy. Courtesy. You know what we call courtesy? Decorum. Respect for people. That attitude that gives honor and courtesy and respect another word you can put is respect 
the mindset where you hold people in high esteem is an adjustment that will make the rain fall in your life. It will make you a magnet. By and large, after preaching, there are things you do that makes you lovable. It makes you inviting. Look at me. Come, Sam. If Sam comes and finishes preaching, watch this, and then I come up as a man of God, and I just collect the mic from him, and I say, Sam, that's nice. My boys are really growing. You see that? Watch this. Am I anointed? Yes. Do I love God? Do I love souls? Do you think my relationship with Sam will be sustainable? No. Because I simply violated his self-worth to prove a point. There's no attitude of respect and courtesy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you are higher or lower than that person, that attitude of honor and courtesy. And I pick up the mic, Sam, God bless you. Everybody, let's celebrate the hand of God upon Sam. Sam, thank you. You are a great blessing. I honor you. Thank you so much. You see that? Courtesy. At once, Sam will love me and Sam will reward me by increasing my self-worth and my honor in his mind. See, this is what makes some leaders, although they are silent, the reverence that people give to them is almost like, like human worship. There is something they are doing. They have transferred honor to their subordinates and they are receiving the harvest of that honor back. Are you learning something? Never you sub your subordinates to prove that you are mighty. You are a fool if you do that. Transfer honor to them. Some of them will be rebellious, but it's a law that cannot be broken. The honor will return to you a hundredfold. Is God speaking to us? The mentality of courtesy. Ladies, one act of courtesy can open your marital destiny. You have fasted for 40 days, but your attitude, no courtesy. You give a gentleman something, you cannot even give him with, 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 with courtesy. Help me with that handkerchief. Eh, take, hello, what are you even saying again? Take. And whereas this guy has been looking from afar, oh Lord, do I go or do I not go? And immediately he sees that nonsense. He plots the graph and says, no, this is not what God showed me. And it turns back. Are you anointed? Yes. Do you pray in tongues? Yes. But it has stopped the door of marriage. Am I speaking to us? Some of us, our attitude of being rude, rude to people, courtesy. I make it as a point of duty. I make it as a point of duty as much as possible. Even when I am rebuking people, they know that in that rebuke, I love them. I sent a text to the leaders, I think it was yesterday or today, appreciating all of them for handling the ministry activities and doing everything in my absence. I'm still going to tell them again during the, our leaders meeting because I love them. I honor the leaders in this ministry. I respect the grace of God upon their life. And I, I thank God for the grace and the opportunity and the privilege of working with them. That is the reason why no matter what happens, when you come outside, you must find some chairs. I rebuke the protocol most times when I come and see people standing. Why? Because of honor. I honor the fact that you left your house and came here. Are you seeing that you are not just coming to, to Koinonia because I'm anointed? There is an atmosphere that unconsciously honors you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are churches you go and you are treated like a piece of rag. The only person who deserves to be honored is the man of God. And members say, I can't stay here. Is the man warded? Yes. Is he anointed? Yes. But he does not understand the organizational principles of sustaining success. Please learn it. Courtesy. Learn to be cautious. Learn to treat people with honor and respect. Greet people. Greet people. Don't say this person, when I was in SS3, was please leave all those things. Greet people. Oh, Benga, how are you? Um, Abiodun, how are you? When I came in, I saw Jake's. I gave him a nice hug. And I just come and say, I'm, no, 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 no. 
Say, I receive grace to honor men. Say, I receive grace to show courtesy. If somebody offends you, handle the situation in wisdom. Don't just hit things in a way that you scatter the opportunities of tomorrow because you are trying to respond to the pain of today. There are roommates who cannot talk to themselves again because of that mutual respect of honor. And you, when people honor you, reciprocate it back. You become foolish when you are only receiving and not giving. If Tosin looks at me now and says, ah, says something that I like, I will find something to reciprocate. And so you become a friend of everybody. When people are suffering from complex, they run to you. Because you have an atmosphere that says you are welcome. You have an atmosphere. When I finish Koinonia here, I've been, I've been tired since morning. But I have to stand here to at least. The people are joining a line. That is already embarrassing for me. Because I know some of the people standing in that line. It's not like there are some helpless people. But they humble themselves and they stand. And to be able to do that, I give them a hug. I talk to them with courtesy. All our little children that come to hug me here, I honor them. That's why immediately after service, they come around. You, the little children sit near you. As they are sharing the grace, they are running away from you. Something about your life is driving them. That's how a business partner will look at you and say, you don't have the skill for business, but there is an attitude. There's something about you. I want to do business with you. There is a business of hundreds of millions that I want to do with you. And you step into favor favor that you will never recover from. There are doors of ministry that have been opened to me today that I know should never have been opened. But because I honored my way to them, I treated people with courtesy and I didn't know when I met them again and they were the ones who advocated that I be blessed. Is God speaking to us? The last thing I want to talk about is the mentality of endurance. Endurance. Help us, Holy Spirit. Just give me five minutes and we'll pray. Everybody say endurance. Say it, endurance. The Bible puts it this way. He that endures to the end. Everybody say endure to the end. Many people will never taste of the fruit of true success because we gas out. We do not have the staying power. Listen, listen, listen. That's why the ministry of prayer is inevitable if you want to finish strong. Endurance. Endurance. In your journey to greatness, you will endure. You will endure hardship. You will endure misunderstanding. You will endure misinterpretation. You will endure a lot. You will make sacrifices. You will endure hunger. But he that endures, let me tell you, when you see a blessed man, respect him. Don't ever see any man, either in the corporate world or in the ministry, that is truly lifted and trivialize what God has done. Never want my crown until you see the scars on my hand. Every crown has a scar on the hand. Are you, are, you, are you getting this? I'm rounding up. I'm speaking to you. That illusion that greatness will just happen to you is a dream. Wake up. That illusion that somebody will become successful and then you enter his success just like that. I'm telling you it's a dream. Wake up. So while you are there running people down, realize that if you must be great, your own curriculum of endurance is waiting for you. No matter how you are, there are people today who misunderstand koinonia. There are people today who misinterpret what we are doing. We have been persecuted in our respect. Don't you think it's everybody that loves Joshua Selman? There are people when you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the Lord Jesus. There are people if you call Joshua Selman, it's as if you call the devil and the antichrist. All together is what builds dexterity for ministry. 
I remember when the protocol started responding to calls and the rest. I received a lot of backlashes from people. Are you trying to say you are too busy now? You cannot respond to us. Why should protocol be endurance? But right now, it has proven to be an excellent system. Endurance. Are you willing to endure? Many of us do not want to be talked bad about. Sorry for you as far as success is concerned. Let me tell you, it's a cross that every great man must carry. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You want anointing, but you don't want the persecution that comes with it. You are dreaming. Oh, they will talk against you. They will say, how are we sure that anointing is genuine? How are we sure the miracles are real? How are we sure? This one that have not been around now for two weeks. <laughs> Somebody can say, I knew it. Maybe he went to collect power. <laughs> He went to collect power for the next level. Listen. Listen. Never be under pressure to prove your innocence. There is a law. You can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. Be comforted by the immutability of kingdom laws. And do not be under pressure to prove any point. If somebody meets somebody and says, Benga... I'm suspecting that he has been sleeping with prayer band ladies. Don't try me, me, God knows. We, no, 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 no. You can do nothing against the truth. The truth was buried after three days. It resurrected. You can't hide truth for long. No, sir. No, sir. Keep your sacrifice and endure. I'm giving you a mindset. Realize that success does not come on a platter of gold. The favor of God does not take away the need for endurance. You will endure hardship. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will endure hardship. To be prosperous financially, you will make sacrifices. You will make mistakes. You will learn a lot. To grow in ministry, you will have to learn a lot of lessons through pain, sweat, and blood. I know my message is not attractive, but this is what will make you uncommon. endurance endurance endure hardship as a faithful soldier of Christ you went to win souls nothing happened you went for that meeting you thought the power of God would move nothing happened and you seem to live in shame don't worry keep fasting keep praying I know you went and it looked like they dread you you went to sing and you lost your key you lost your voice you embarrassed don't worry let them keep laughing don't be under pressure to prove anything and say no is i can sing oh what happened that day is i had kata forget about all those explanations kata or no kata continue a day will come you will be noted for persistence and your critics will become the advocates of your lifting when you endure if you give up you make the prophecy of your critics true. You make it a self-fulfilling prophecy. God is speaking to someone. We are rounding up. That all you need is to keep doing what you are doing. I know they are talking about you at home. Your prayer life has brought a lot of persecution. But endure. Keep praying. Sister, they've told you you will marry the Holy Spirit. No problem. Keep praying. They've called you Mother Mary. And now you are ashamed. You cannot even hold your Bible again. Endure. Listen, it's an irrefutable law of greatness. An irrefutable law. I thank God today for the sacrifices of endurance. I thank God for the times when I did not give up in my life. Today, it has translated to the salvation of millions. The transformation of lives seated here right now listening to me are people who need to endure i know you have been taught that if it is of god it must come cheap and easy no sir there is a system in the kingdom where men pass through the cross to get the crown this is a very deep teaching you must endure we are going to pray oh i will endure no matter what it will take I will endure. As you are sitting down right now, there may not be one naira in your pocket, but endure. Keep tightening. Some of you, aside from boss, you may trek home. Endure. 
Some of you, you go and receive as old as you are, you still receive all kinds of beating from your elderly ones. Endure. And you see the hand of God upon your life. Endure. Who is God speaking to? Mm. Some of you are spilling over and it looks bad. But God is speaking to you tonight. Endure. Don't worry. It looks like one year is a long time. Two years is a long time. But don't worry. Like the twinkling of an eye, you will come out. But as you are coming out, you will not just come out a graduate. What would take your colleagues 10 years you have learned? So one giant leap in destiny you will cover up. But for now, endure. 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 You don't have suit to wear. Don't be under pressure to do anything. Endure. Is God speaking to us? I choose to endure. This is how this ministry came. To see what God is doing today. And to see where he brought us. And to see where he's taking us. Endurance. Endure the mockery. Endure the shame. Never be under pressure to prove yourself. At every given point in your life. Those who love you outweigh those who hate you. Don't because of the five or six people that hate you. You throw away the honor of millions of people in your life. If 30 people hate Sam, 2 million people love him. Respect their love and don't turn to 10 or 16 people and try to be under the pressure of defending yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? At every point in your life, those who are for you are greater than those who are against you. Rise up on your feet. <laughs> As a man thinketh, your mental composition endure. You are in that department, it looks like you will die. It will not kill you. You are not the first to graduate from there. Endure hardship. Endure the mockery. You will be misunderstood. You are being nice to brothers. Sometimes you cook for them. They've called you desperate. Endure. Don't worry. A day will come, his honor will come upon your life. Lift your voice and thank the Lord for the word tonight. Pray. The mental composition that makes you victorious. The mental composition. I give you a guarantee with the integrity of God backed up. It will make you exceptional. It will make you notable. Are you praying, Koinonia? Hallelujah. I like you to lift up your voice. And say, Lord, I bring my mindset under the Lordship of Christ. That every mentality in me that is making me think in a way that is inconsistent with the patterns of greatness. I take authority over it. Lift your voice and pray. Koinonia, are you praying tonight? leka fresh. I pull down strongholds. I cast down imaginations. Guard your heart with all diligence. It is the key to your prosperity. Your mindset is the key to the increase in the anointing. It's the key to the Holy Spirit doing mighty things in your life. The key to you being a champion. The key to you breaking cultural barriers. The key to you being mighty. I don't care where you are now. I don't care what is wrong now. Endure. Be strong. Be strong. Hold on. Be strong. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. The name of the mindset I want you to have is called the mind of Christ. The resultant effect of this transformation 
is called the mind of Christ. Then you become an envoy. Then you master life. Then you become a champion. Men honor you as if you charm them. Everywhere you go, you are a magnet. And people are saying, what? I'm giving you the mental requirements of an exceptional life. Please give us Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Oh Lord, I pray that your people will listen. Permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The word let there is permit. Allow it. God is saying change. I want to make you mighty. You came from Kogi state. I know there is witchcraft, but can you adjust your mind and see a champion that I will make out of you? I know you are weak. The whole family stays in one room. But can you make that shift in your mind? Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you, Koinonia. Let this mind be in you. Upgrade your mindset. Don't let culture cheat you. Don't let your past cheat you. Hallelujah. i like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I reject inferiority and low self-esteem. You have made me great. I'm not cheap. I'm not a local champion. I stop trying to do things. Pray, pray, pray. I stop trying to do things to prove a point. I stop trying to borrow money to look rich. I stop trying to tell lies to look like I'm making progress. I reject a life of falsehood. I move gradually. Gradually. Level by level. Pray. I reject low self-esteem. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. No culture. No CGPA. No financial level. No challenge. Will ever make me feel bad job or lack of job admission or lack of admission marriage or lack of marriage let it never get to you and make you feel inferior pray satan the lord rebuke you i refuse to feel inferior the favor of the lord the favor of the lord a champion on my way to happen hallelujah hallelujah now this prayer point i like you to pray it with all your heart say lord my mouth has brought too much trouble in my life it will not continue like this i set a guard over my mouth i have gossiped my way to trouble i have lied my way to trouble i have i have joined the heads of people and friends i've done a lot of things that have destroyed people go ahead and pray i offer my mouth my tongue my lips from today it becomes an object of blessing an instrument of lifting pray I had character and a healthy mindset to my anointing I speak aright I speak only when I need to set a watch oh God over my lips set a watch oh God over my lips set a watch oh God over my lips may I not destroy my friends with my words may I not destroy my destiny help us may I not drive away my instruments of breakthrough May I not scatter my family with my words. May I not destroy ministries 
May I not destroy my academics. May I not destroy my anointing with bad words, uncultured words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three, we are going to pray. Say, Lord, from today, I have respect and honor for all men, regardless of who they are, regardless of who their parents are. Grant me grace to demonstrate genuine respect and honor for people, those higher than me, my contemporaries, and even those lower than me. Lift your voice and cry to God. I repent of my rude nature. I repent of my pride and arrogance. Lord, I receive grace. May courtesy open doors of access to me. May honor open doors of access to me. Are you praying? Put a guard, oh God, on my lips. I want to be exceptional. I want to be exceptional. I want to shorten the journey to my destiny. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, hold hands around. We are going to pray. Because you will need grace to fulfill this sign. You are going to pray and say, Lord, over what you have called me to do, I will endure. Over the preparation, I'm in the school of the spirit. It does not yet appear, but I will endure. Lord, men are mocking me, but I will endure. My finances are mocking me. My lack of marriage, my lack of childbirth is mocking me, but I will endure. Lift your voice and pray. A supply of grace. A supply of grace. I refuse to be under pressure. Pray. Pray. Grace. 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 To continue in the midst of harsh conditions. Grace. To continue in the midst of persecution. Grace. To continue. That ministry must not die. That anointing must not die. That business must not die. That job seeking must not end. I endure to the end. I endure to the end. There's no food now, but I endure. I don't have friends now, but I endure. Second Chronicles 20. The prophet said, Believe in the Lord, and you shall be established. He said, But believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. It's not enough to believe in the Lord, you must believe in the vessel that you will use. Hallelujah. Human beings have always been the carriers of God's anointings. Vessels of grace. There are certain levels of grace. You don't fast your way into it. It's an election of grace. Hallelujah. The Bible says he led captivity captive. Ephesians chapter 4. It says he gave gifts unto men some apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers and evangelists for the edification of the saints that they the saints will do the work of the ministry that together we will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ and he gave gifts unto men and he gave gifts unto men I have found my servant David and with my holy oil have I anointed him? 
it's not enough to believe in God you must believe in the word that comes from the mouth of God everybody say I believe number three you must believe and receive your miracle by faith mark 11 verse 24 jesus say what so things ever ye desire when you pray it says believe that you have received it there is a difference between receiving and having it says oh i thought they projected it believe that you receive then you will have it receiving is of the spirit having is the experiential manifestation it says when you pray you must believe receive it it is yours in the now listen the bible says receive and have therefore i say unto you what things soever ye desire what do you desire tonight whatsoever miracle you desire whatsoever breakthrough whatsoever deliverance you desire it says when you pray believe that is yours believe it receive it receiving is by faith receiving is by faith it's not a physical reality you don't receive physically you receive by faith then you will have it in the glory i will stand i will stand and i will lift my hand in the glory we receive every miracle you have for us it's in the glory tonight we stand we will stand and we will lift our hands sing your glory we will receive every miracle you have listen you will never have in the physical what you do not receive in the spirit are you listening to me you will never have in the physical what you do not receive it said when you pray it didn't say believe you have that will be lying believe you receive and you will have it number four you must take action listen we call koinonia intimacy but not just intimacy partnership a participation with the holy ghost hallelujah it's not entirely left to god to change your situation it's not entirely left unto you the bible says listen to me that when they came to jesus christ jesus came and went to a pool called bethesda that had five porches and the Bible says he saw a man who had been laid there for 38 years. Hallelujah. When he saw that man, he told him that would he want to be healed. And the man was grumbling and complaining and he did not bring his miracle. Are you listening to me? Grumbling and complaining does not produce miracles. Hallelujah. And the Bible says... That Jesus told him, John 5, verse 1 to 9. You can read it. It says, take up thy bed. Hold on. How can Jesus tell a crippled man to take his bed? It is a people assist him. He said, you, stand up, take your bed, and walk home. In other words, 
if you believe me to be powerful enough take action faith is not faith until there is an action hallelujah acts chapter 3 paul i mean peter and john on their way to prayer the hour of prayer the bible says and then they saw this crippled man from birth sitting at the gate beautiful hallelujah acts chapter 4 verse 1 to 9 and the bible says that he looked unto them expecting to receive arms he did not know that his time of visitation had come and peter said silver and gold we have not he said but such as we have see there are people that have something let me tell you something not everybody is a noise maker there are people that have something it's an election of grace at what point did peter know he had something because the last time the bible tells us he was sinking he was not sure he had something but now he said uh -uh, it's not peter something i have something and such as i have give i he said in the name of jesus oh this is the inheritance of the believer in the name of jesus he said rise up do you know the man did not stand he was just looking because there was no action the bible says listen this sign shall follow it will not go before them it will follow the signs follow they do. listen your faith initiates signs and wonders the woman with the issue of blood began to speak she said this is my conclusion if only i can touch the hem of his garment i don't care who is going to stop me hallelujah and the bible says peter helping his faith to work held his hands and lifted him and the bible says and he leaping stood hallelujah as the word of god comes don't sit down wondering that's the time to say thank you jesus that's the time to celebrate that's the time to check yourself check the tumor don't say i don't want to but no that devil that has been oppressing you as the word of god comes you receive it and you begin to take action this is the last time that terminal disease i wave you goodbye you are gone for good partnership hallelujah how many of us are ready to receive tonight i know that god is going to do mighty things it's going to be very very fast very 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 fast hallelujah very very fast ushers if it's possible please start collecting the prayer request because we don't want an interruption if you don't believe prayers are answered in this place please don't write anything you will not go to hell I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting i will reverence you lord i will reverence you lord hallelujah please pass your prayer request to the last person by your side ushers coordinate them let's do it Hallelujah. Please pass it quickly. So we bow as we enter the throne room. 
Lord, we cast ourselves down at your feet. For you are holy, thou art holy, there is none like you. For in your presence, that is where I must be. I love Hello, Madonna. He's healing everyone in obedience to Christ. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The one who does these great things. Tonight let no man be worthy of praise. Let no man be worthy of honor. Alpha Omega for the things that you will do in this place I give you praise because you always hear me whenever I call him he will answer me Elijah called on him and he answered him the apostles called on him and he answered them this is why i know whenever i call on you you will answer me listen let me teach you something before i begin to minister you can never be more confident than your secret place will give you are you listening to me the secret place is the place of authentic power the confidence of a believer is in the derivative of your knowledge the Bible says let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength it says but let him that glory at glory in this that he knoweth and understandeth me I know that there are many men and women of God here who have come from different places to catch the fire. And this is why I'm saying this. Listen, this is not about jamboree. There is a real person called the Holy Ghost. He's not a myth. Listen, you will never be able to walk in miracles until you believe in the reality of this personality. That he can find expression in the midst of his people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus saw tears and wheat. And he gave us a verdict. He said the enemy has done this. Can I announce to you that there is a devil that will not relent over your destiny until you put him where he belongs. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The Bible says upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness. And then the sons of Jacob after that deliverance will possess oh there is no possession until there is a separation between light and darkness hallelujah all the powers of darkness 
that have tormented you while I prayed the Lord opened my eyes and I saw a lot of torments that are keeping people where they are listen the Lord told me something he said for everyone I was talking with my sister earlier on and she was just sharing her desire to receive and I, I went to the Lord about it and the Lord said that all you need to do tonight that's what he was telling me he said if you speak it I will confirm it that's what God told me hallelujah when God told me I started writing a list of the issues I know in people's lives because I've been receiving text messages some of you sent me text messages angry about some situations and my God told me he said if you will speak it I will do it tonight I tell you the truth and I lie not believe the Lord he will surprise you tonight please listen there are some of you I must say this when we mention your case or any issue that has to do with you please don't waste the time of others hallelujah don't waste the time of others struggling and then coming very shabby very complacent we'll just jump you is that agreed because we want to see how we can use the few minutes we have to really do a quick walk in our lives hallelujah thank you jesus lift your hands as we worship you see the rain of your love feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear just lift your hands i didn't ask you to sing feel the rain of your love see the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear yeah. we see the rain of your love Feel the wind of your spirit. Please lift your hands. When I begin to sing, let it rain. There will be deliverances. Let us hear. So let it rain. Or shall spring them out. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Moving across this building. Yeah. The power of God is already moving. But we are going to shout the name Jesus. Listen. Listen. Every time the Lord shows me this, I see angels. And I see the movement of the angelic right now. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. Many of you will literally feel like electricity running through your body. And those devils, there is no hiding place tonight. Are you listening to me? How many of you believe? There is no hiding place tonight. There is no hiding place. At the count of three, my God, you will confirm your word. Everyone under any yoke, any spell, any enchantment, at the count of three, let the power of God bring such a one inside and outside. Let the angels of the Lord Move at the count of three. Are you ready to shout now? One, two, three. Oh, shake it, it, it. Oh, break, break it, 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 it. I cast out devils. Go, 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 the power of darkness let the fire of the holy ghost let the fire 
of the Holy Ghost. Fall. Let the fire bring her. Leave her, leave her, leave her. Leave her. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost. Show Satan, get lost. Satan, get lost. some of you you will run out here by the influence of the Holy Ghost no man will stop you by the influence of the Holy Ghost is the fire of God it will happen to some people from outside outside the fire of God is falling and even inside but I want you to know as I begin to chant in the spirit there's no hiding place for any devil tonight so get take a part Lord, let your power move. Every power, every force of darkness. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it fall. I release the fire. Leave them, leave them, leave them, ushers. Leave them alone. You will come out. By the power of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out from your seat. The Holy Ghost will bring you out. some of you that see men come to sleep with you in dreams and oppress you they call it spirit husband and spirit wife i don't care what the name is right now there is fire lift your hands everybody responsible for failure responsible for delay listen listen at the count of three the lord showed me in a vision this one will hit many people. Tonight is a night of deliverance. Many of you do not know this is what is responsible for your setback. I already see angels standing in front and outside. Listen, it's going to, you know, you will not be able to stand it. It's a fire. Are you ready now? At the count of three, some of you will not finish shouting Jesus. Lord, I pray. You said if I can speak it, you will do it. I stand under this apostolic unction. Every manifestation of the devil at the count of three. One, two, three. Go for Russia. Regresia. Go for Yeta. 
Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end. The power of God is still falling. I tell you, devils are under major attack. But Paul's attack. The angels are walking. Don't wait till you fall down. Receive. Don't wait till you fall down. Has nothing to do with falling. Yay! was a sound that I had in the spirit. That's why I'm singing it. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Bring her. It's time for her deliverance. I command you to come. I command you to come. Don't force her. She will come by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come. Come and stand here. Yeah. 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 Listen. A scripture entered my spirit. It said, how awe-inspiring are your ways. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemy submit when light enters you it makes you a madman tonight is a night of major deliverance major 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 hallelujah leave her alone Stand there. Stand there. Yeah. 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 Listen. Listen to me. Everybody look at me. Please. The word of God is not a lie. God cannot be joking with you. Anytime you take your Bible, I told God, my life and this ministry will be a demonstration of the book of Acts. It's the Acts of the Holy Ghost. Sir King Salama, Salama. He's called the Prince of Peace. Salama. Hallelujah. Leave her alone. Be still, stand in one place now. Sir 
Your time in this body is over. Your time in this body is over. Now in the mighty name of Jesus. Out of her now. Come out of her. Out of her. Sir King Salama. Out. Come out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. He make it his angel spirits and his ministers flames. Leave her now. She's free. Sarkin Salama. 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 Salina Kawo Yabo. Your time is up. This is Koinonia. The mighty name of Jesus. Come out now. Out of her. Listen. Listen. The Lord is showing me an arrow coming from outside this country. This is what affected this boy. This thing has tied this gentleman's life. Leave him. Leave him. Come back here. Come back here. Now. Sorry, everybody. Come back here. Many of you, listen. Many of you do not know that wickedness is real. You have allowed films to, distort, to, to spoil your mind. If you don't take, I tell you, whatever is stopping, one of the things I will be doing tonight is breaking the curse of marital delay. Oh, the devil, it will answer tonight. Look at, it's already happening. Come out! Come out! This guy has a violent spirit. A violent spirit. The mighty name of Jesus. Every lecker hole you have over this body. I challenge you right now. You will leave him. The fire of God is against you. It's time for you to go out. Out of him. Out. Shall the captives be delivered and the prey be taken from the mighty. But thus saith the Lord. Let her go right now. Thou foul devil, come out, come out. So pray, take a pariada baladala. Sarkin Salama, Salama, Salama. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you what the Lord is showing me about this gentleman. This guy, listen, listen, please. This guy has a very, very colorful destiny. But do you know what I just saw? From his head to his toe. How many of you have read the story of Lazarus? That's what I saw. And he was tied with snakes from his head to his toe. This is what I'm seeing right now. See? Do you know that the challenges many of you are going through is not ordinary? It's because nobody has told you. But tonight there is a God to set you free. This is spirit husband. This is what is stopping this lady from getting married. Out. Come out of her. Out now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your time is over. I'm seeing an army officer. I'm army officer. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Shekataba. Brento Koprikata. Out of her right now. This is the spirit of lust. Go proskataliada. 
be gone. There is no hiding. I tell you something. See, the mistake the devil made was to allow you come in here tonight. I don't care whether you are wherever. If you came here tonight, if except God lied to us in the Bible, but if he told us the truth, there will be a performance in your life tonight. Sirkin Salama. Come out. Out of her right now. Salama. Salama. Listen. Let me tell you what happens in meetings like this. Some of you, because of this demon spirit, the one to start pushing you to go out or to run away, you, you better stay and let God help you. The devil is a liar tonight. Are you listening to me? Okay, I didn't finish with this guy. Watch what will happen to this brother. He's not looking at me. Oh. He's not looking at me. Just calm down. Stay in one place. I'm not speaking to him. Don't, don't worry. Stay in one place. You can't go anywhere. You come here. This is a, the head of a snake I'm seeing. Right to his foot. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Sets you free right now from your head to your toe. I lose you. I lose you. He's going to cough out something outside. Take him outside. He's going to go and cough out something. Sarakin Salama 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 Come out of her right now in the name of Jesus. Devil of darkness. Sarakin Salama there's someone that has a problem a heart problem heart problem that was your request heart something in your heart i don't know what it is the lord is showing me please remember i told you don't waste our time please there's a lot of things we have to do this night heart something pertaining your heart if you are still thinking about it, you are not the person. Please, quickly. Salama, 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 Hallelujah. Ah, ah. See, there is a lady. Now, don't feel embarrassed at what I'm about to say. You see snakes in your bathroom ladies bathroom who is that person come out come out this has been an issue you have not shared it with people snakes you are you see it who is the person please salama salama yeah you are not the only one no you are not the only one this is the problem god god is ready to deliver you look this is a family are you listening to me this is not th this is an apostolic ministry so there is we are here we are a family when god is mentioning your case forget about what what issue of shame issue of shame is out of the way hallelujah what's wrong with your heart asthma, asthma. is asthma really a heart this one i'm seeing a heart problem but I'll pray for you. Be healed right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed. Listen. I'm going to pray for you people. God is doing it. Come out of her now. Out. Come out of her now. Devil of darkness. The time is up. 
Just hold my hands with both of your hands. The fire of God will hold it as tight as you can. It cannot stand. It will leave you because you are destined for greatness. Once I see it in the spirit, it must go. For light cannot hide in darkness. Aha, I see you now. Out! Go! Go! Kapotoka! Reketaria! Mambroskote! Reketeria daba! Boseketalia! Out! Come out of her! Out of her right now! Sarkin Salama! Look at me. Two things God is doing. Hold my hands. Hold it. Do you believe you want God to set you free? Sarkin Salama! Look at my eyes. You just look at my eyes. Try to look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Devil of darkness. Go! There is no hiding. For there is a name that is above every other name. What did she come out for? The same thing? Why were you afraid? Don't be afraid, eh? You hear? Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Look at me. Can you shout Jesus as loud as you can? Go ahead. Salama. You are free. Salama. Salama, yeah. Be delivered right now. I set you free. Now. Do you know what is happening to this lady? If I tell you, some of you will not believe. For every shout that she's making is demons that are going. When she's done, she'll be quiet. <laughs> now, leave her. Fire upon you right now. Out of her. This lady has a great destiny. This is a snake. This is what I'm seeing. This is a whole snake. Mighty snake. The Lord is against you. Let her go now. That is above all names. Hold my hands, my dear. Hold my hands. No, I'm not speaking to her. Don't worry. Come, hold my hands. I'm not speaking to her. Don't worry. You people do not understand spiritual things. You are spiritual people here. Come, hold my hands. The demon knows what it means, what I'm saying. Salama, yeah. Salama. Hurry up, please save our time. We, we don't have much time. Salama. Hold my hands. Don't tap it. Hold it. Out now. Salama, yeah. Salama. Watch the way this demon will leave. Come, see. Listen. You will go on your knees 
you will bow to the king of kings and go simple you will go on your knees bow to the king and off you go Sir King Salama 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 yeah Listen this is not jamboree as I see my father do it don't go and try it you will die for nothing this is not child's play hallelujah don't you think we are just no I'm not one of those ministers I can't come and waste your time God is too serious are you listening to me now lift your hands many of you do not know listen please now is the time to stand both for yourself if you are a lady here there is no reason why you should not be lifting your hands marriage is a blessing it's not a curse as i as i talk as i talk because you see i, I see a sword of fire leaving my mouth i want to break certain demonic things many of you don't know what is stopping you and your loved ones for some of you is a role in your family many people have told you nothing just just hope one day no we don't do that nonsense in this place now faith is lift your hands hallelujah listen the moment we shout the name Jesus some of you listen you will testify whatever is happening to you here will locate all your loved ones around listen the reason is because there are ordinances of darkness that are keeping some of you your parents took you to places in the name of protection and that devil will not let you go the Lord instructed me to do this hallelujah if you are here or your loved ones there has been delay men come they go or maybe you have a child and you're thinking you will not marry that devil is a liar this night are you listening to me so don't just stand for yourself alone don't say it does not concern me don't be foolish hallelujah are you ready now you will see the demonstration of the power of the spirit Kai, because see i'm seeing blood i'm seeing blood dripping on the ground let me tell you what this means there are covenants and ordinances this is what the lord is showing me but my bible says the blood of jesus speaketh better things better things at the shout of the name jesus the demons responsible for any marital delay god you said if i speak it you will do it right now at the count of three it will hit some of you in a mighty way inside and outside lord let nobody be spared one two three break 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 ushers bring them out ushers bring them out break 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 the yoke be broken the yoke be broken the yoke i release you i release you i release you i release you every cause of marriage over your family tonight be free be free be free don't don't take at her don't take at her time to get married hey bring them out don't wait till you come out the power of god is setting you free where you are yes 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 ordinances i'm seeing altars on fire altars on fire altars on fire altars on fire i set them if i be a servant of god 
right now i set every demonic altar on fire it will burn tonight I release you. I release your family. I release you inside and outside. I release you. I release you into your marital destiny. The curse is lifted. I release your sisters. I release your brothers by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I release you. I release you. I release you. Just receive. I release you. I release you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I got a text from someone. I mean, they brought someone who was sick. Who was that person? I can't remember now. A sick person. No, they sent, I remember they sent me a text that they would bring the sick person. Please save our time for God's sake. We're still going to minister to the sick. Hallelujah. Let that lady go free. Now, devil, let her go free now. Let her go free. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you. Let her go free right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Everybody say, I receive. Yes, it's happening to you. Now, please listen. I want to pray for terminal diseases. Terminal diseases. All kinds of terminal diseases. Please, you brought someone or you came here with a terminal disease. Come out quickly. Terminal, only terminal diseases. Please, let's save time. Can we do that? God is locating people. There are some of you, God, God is already. Terminal diseases. Please come out quickly, quickly. Quickly. I beg you, if you can run, run. Save time, please. Please. As you come out here, say, Lord, it comes. I hope you know what terminal diseases are. to God wave that sickness bye bye because it's going forever I'm not afraid Come out 
of her. Out. Out of her right now. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Hallelujah. Now all of you because of time. Listen. Can you just hold your hands together? If you can. I'll just minister to you at once, please. If you came here believing God, then know that it will end. Hallelujah. There is an angel standing here. And there is an angel of the Lord standing here. Please listen. When we begin to minister to the sick, if we call a case and you came with the person, please make sure you come. Especially if the person cannot speak English for our mothers so that we can hurry up, okay? The power of God will come upon some of you. But it really doesn't matter. That devil is going right now. The spirit is called the spirit of infirmity. Hallelujah. After a country, you will say, I am healed. When that happens, it's like electricity. It will pass with power all around this place. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Go, Poto. Be free. Go, 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 go. Coming out this is go, 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 go. Go by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Go, go, go. Come back with testimonies. Come back with the testimony by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come back with the testimony. 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 I speak to you, all of you. Come back with a testimony. Come back with a testimony. Hallelujah. Say I'm healed. Go back to your seats. You can check yourselves. Please make sure you check yourself. Go to the hospital if you need. I know someone with HIV was healed. Anyone who has been, anyone with any CG, see the power of God is, is breaking from inside. Some of you are outside here. You are not receiving. People inside are receiving and they are leaving you. Listen. Anyone with any academic issue that Senate has refused to answer between now and the next 14 days, I command them to answer. Anyone who is at the verge of probation, listen, anyone at the verge of probation, I pick you from where you are and I bring you back as a student in this school. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I want to pray for you. Any cause you did not fail, listen. See, believe oh, any cause you did not fail, but you went to the board and you saw F. I change it. I said, I change it. Man, to kapala kuzita. I change it, Kato Pratishi. I change it. Hallelujah. Any man, I don't care who, who is molesting and oppressing people in every in any department or any faculty, whether supervisor or whoever, I instruct them to begin to favor you now. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Now listen carefully. Those inside, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm standing out because I want those outside to appreciate this meeting. Now I'm going to pray for you. Some of you, I'm seeing chains on the heads of we are dealing with academic issues now. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to lift your hands. Many of you will feel like fire burning your head. If that wait, I'm going to count three. When that happens to you, listen, this one will affect a lot of people. There are some of you that are first class materials. But because of this wicked thing, you were excellent in secondary school. It's not that you are bad. Let me tell you, those days will be restored. Because listen, listen, listen. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. When I count three, inside and outside, with all your heart, shout, I receive. For some of you, that will be the last thing you will remember. Something will happen to you that will change your life. Are you ready now? Please, with all faith. One, two, three. Receive it now. Receive it. Take it. I restore you. Take it, 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 inside, inside, take, receive it inside, receive it inside, outside, receive it. Receive it inside, take it inside, take it inside, at the back, inside, the angel of the Lord is touching people, at the back, outside, here, at the back, take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Many of you will go back now and your academics will surprise you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now listen. Listen. Listen, I want all of you to think about a cause that has been troubling you because I'm about to make it to bow now. Just listen, listen. I'm walking as God is. Just, just think of it in your mind just once and bring it under the Lordship of Christ because I'm about, to op I'm about to tell it to open up for you. Are you ready? It's already happening to this sister. Now listen. Every department... Every faculty in Amadubello University, that cause that is threatening you right now, when I shall bow, many of you feel as if your head will open up. Are you ready now? In the name of Jesus, bow! 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 In the name of Jesus, bow! Bow! bow. In faculty of medicine, bow. Faculty of engineering, bow. Environmental design, bow. Education, bow. Social sciences, bow. Sciences, bow. All the faculties in Congo, bow. Every other faculty, bow. Anyone with a missing script. Problem of missing script. I stand tonight under this unction. And I command, wherever your paper is. Where, except you didn't write that exam. Wherever your paper is. Just as the donkey of Kish was found. I command that paper to be found now. Hallelujah. For all those whose assessments have been bad, listen, for this exam, for all those whose assessments have been bad, have been, uh, are bad, in the name of Jesus, I release makeup test, makeup assignment in the name of Jesus. May the Lord touch the hearts of the lecturers, no matter how hard they are. Hallelujah. All of you shout, I will excel. Say it one more time, I will excel. 
Say, excellence is my portion. Say, I refuse failure. Say, I refuse failure. I take you from pass, from third class. I take you into, some of you are, are trusting, let me tell you, any class you need to step up, I step you up right now. I know some of you are doubting. Do not doubt the creative power of God's word. It created the heavens and earth. I said I step you up, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For all those, whether you or your loved one, they've been writing jam after jam, wayek after wayek. You are looking for papers, it has refused to come. If God be God, if there is a God in this place, listen, those of you who are about to, whether jam, whether DE, you have papers that you need to make up. I stand as a servant of God. I give you the paper you are looking for. Those writing jam, I prophesy, write your last jam in the name of Jesus. Those writing whether wayek or whatever to make up. And there are some of you who are about graduating, but the papers you have are causing trouble. And right now you already have problem at the Senate. Mercy, 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 you must graduate. You must graduate. Let something be done in your life that has not been done in this school. God is visiting people. Thank you, Jesus. God is opening people's files, I tell you. God is visiting people. Don't stand there doubting. God will bless others and leave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything called mental blockage or exam fever, all this nonsense that comes on people you will read and even do tutorial for others in the name of jesus that spirit that makes you to forget things in the exam hall that you will only remember after you finish right right now i cast that spirit in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. You cannot read like a slave. I forbid you from reading like a slave. In the mighty name of Jesus. I tell you, God is visiting people in a mighty way this night. God is visiting people in a mighty way. Hallelujah. In your academics, I don't care how bad it has been. I don't care what has happened from today. Step into that, that dream you saw that your, your results has never looked like it. You have been seeing it. Enter the reality of it. Many of you have dreams. You see four points, but you write exam and see one point. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I tell you, God is visiting people. Hallelujah. Now, please, everybody who is sick, you came here with any kind of disease. I'm about to rebuke it right now, please. We don't have time. Our time is fast spent. But God is going to visit inside. Are you still with me? Are you still with me inside? Now, those outside here, I want, I want to pray. Everybody lay your hands anywhere it's hurting. If it's a part of your body, you cannot lay your hands on, lay on your hands on your chest. Whether fibroids, whether growths, whether cancer, whether blindness, whether deafness, whether lameness, whatever it is, I don't care. If it followed you here, it made a mistake because it's going to leave you right now. Are you listening to me? Some of you, what you call sickness is actually oppression. Because I see that there are many ladies with all kinds of sicknesses. People think you are careless, you are not. That devil will leave you. Hallelujah. Some of you have HIV. It's not like you slept around. You too, you don't know how it came. 
Some of you have all kinds of cancerous growth. There are people they've told you you, you cannot. I, I, after I finish this, I'm going to specially pray for barren people. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, listen. All of you inside, lift your hands. Lift your hands for that healing. I'm going to count three and the power of God will begin to come on sick people. Just those inside. Those inside. Hallelujah. The angels of God are moving inside. I see them. At the count of three inside. I tell you, many sicknesses will disappear right now. The moment I count three, just take that hand and lay it where it's hurting. And start receiving your miracle. Are you ready? One, two, three. Receive right now. Take it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now lay your hands there. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. Many of you are feeling like electricity. It's the healing anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's going through you. Begin to do what you couldn't do before. Those outside now, lay your hands there. Are you ready to receive? That devil will not follow you. Now in the name of Jesus, those outside here, receive. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Growth disappear. Terminal diseases go. Asthma go. Asthma go. Every deaf ear be open now. Every blind eyes be open. If your hair and one leg is shorter than the other, let the other one grow out now to equal sizes. In the name of Jesus. Every lady problem, every woman problem, irregular menstruation ends now. 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 The fire of God is burning. I tell you, the fire of God is burning. Every lump in the breast disappears now. Disappears now. Disappears now. Every growth in any part of your body. Every growth. I cause that growth to its root right now in the name of Jesus. I cause that growth to its root right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Any pain in any area of your body. I rebuke it. Any trace of mental disorder, whether for you or for your loved ones, wherever they are, and if you are here, let the power of God touch you now. Let the fire of God touch you now. Let the fire of God touch you now. Shake it, kapa. Reke te koto to 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 baka. Ziko tu riapata. Zeke te. Let them go. Let them go. Out, 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 out. Every kind of mental problem, whether it has manifested or not, out, 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 out. Go, go. Every curse, every covenant. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, any woman here, or your sister, or you, who has been barren, please connect. Now is the time. We want to release miracle children right now. I don't know whether they have been barren for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. The Bible says, and God opened the womb of Hannah. Listen, I want you to stand. You are a lady here, you lived a promiscuous life. And then you found out that, okay, some things happened. Maybe you lost your womb or something. God is about to give you a new one right now. I don't care what the problem is. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to curse barrenness and impotency. Low sperm count. All this demonic infertility. Whatever. I, I don't care. If it has a name, it's going to answer this night. Are you ready? Everybody inside, make sure you are with me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Whether for you or for your loved ones. Right now, my father in the name that is above all names. Lift your hands. I pray. There are some of you, listen. Listen. Some of you do not know that there are already projections of barrenness on you. It's just that you have not married yet. So don't say until you are married. The devil is wicked. God brought you to set you free. You'll be surprised. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, you're going to shout Jesus. 
and God is going to visit some people. There are some of you, God will visit you not for you, but on behalf of other family members. And I tell you, you will see people take in. Are you listening to me? Do you believe this? At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus and you'll see what will happen. Are you ready? Thank you, Holy Ghost. At the count of three, let your power move across inside and outside. Are you ready? This will happen to many people because there is the curse of barrenness. And standing for anybody at the count of three, shout it with all your heart. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take it, take it, take it. Take it, Supokoto, Rekete Keriata, Barinas, go, 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 inside, inside, fire, fire is falling inside, outside, fire is falling, the cause of barrenness, Tokoto Peketa, for your loved ones, every barren woman, receive children, receive children, receive children, any impotency, Whatever it is, low sperm count, infertility, whatever it is in the name of Jesus, I curse it now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Please stay with me. Sita kapala kushoprete, zimbato krostu palakato sepete. Hallelujah. I want to pray and prophesy. We want to talk on the issue of finances right now. Everybody stand up and take this very seriously. We apologize for the lightning. I believe that maybe some hitches here and there. We'll soon round up. Hallelujah. While this is happening, please let's have all the prayer requests outside here. Look at me. See, listen, look up. The secret of financial blessing is in your giving life. Are you listening to me? I don't care what you are doing. The secret, if you are not a giver, whatever you are seeing now is only a deceit. It won't last. Are you listening to me? I want to minister to you. How many of you know that God is not glorified in anybody's poverty? How many of you are tired of the situation of some of your family members? You know, you know what? Uh, some of your parents, one job here, two months, they've driven them away. This is a curse. The problem is that pastors like sugarcoating things. They just say, oh, it's well. There is a difference between faith and foolishness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to challenge you. Everybody, please hold a seat. Bring out a seat. You know us in this place. If you don't believe, don't bring it out. I want to break the curse of poverty. Don't you think, please, I, I, if you have something, share with your neighbor. Please, please, please. Bring out a seat. Don't murmur and grumble. Just keep your seat back, please. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. Look at me. Look at me, sister. Look at me. Tell her to look at me. Look at me. Just tell her to look at me. Don't worry. Leave her. Look at me. Come out of her. Devil of darkness. Ah, leave you alone. Praise God. See, while I was praying for this meeting, I saw this. Please listen. I saw a particular family. This is a revelation that the Lord showed me. And I saw them around the river. Hallelujah. Around the river with 500 naira. I don't know. I'm not going to mention them so that you don't think maybe I'm talking about a church or a ministry. We don't do that. But I saw some people seeming men of God or whatever around that they were trying to do something about financial prosperity. You see that? They killed chicken. They killed one other animal, I think goat or something. And they were invoking things on the person. And the Lord said, save this family. I saw it in the vision that the Lord showed me. There is nothing we will do here that God did not instruct. Hallelujah. 
Please, if you do not have a revelation of this, give your money. You won't go to hell. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Bring out something and connect it. I want to pray for you. You will lift it up. Hallelujah. Inside and outside, just lift it up. People are oppressed. Ah, people are oppressed. Listen, just lift it. Many of you, the fire will fall on you and your sacrifice. It will fall on you. See, it's poverty I want to attack. It's a spirit. Don't be mistaken about it. It's already happening to people. Everybody lift it. Please, make sure there is a seed. It will be your contact. Clash the symbol for me, please. At the clash of the symbol. Are you ready now? My father, I pray, it's your desire to prosper us. People have suffered. Families have suffered. Right now, spirit of poverty, go, go, go. Keep the offering up. Go, 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 go. Shake it. For your family, I bought that spirit of poverty. It's a cause. Leave God's people. Poverty causes laziness. Poverty causes lack of failure. Lift your seed. It's your sacrifice. My God and my King. If God be God, I pray. Poverty be broken. In the name of Jesus. Be broken. So protocoto rekete kete rekoto preketika jobless go 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 Hallelujah. To me, my people made a covenant with me by sacrifice. I command doors of uncommon, unusual, inexplainable and sharp prosperity. Let it be open now for you and for your family. That joblessness ends now. Mm, God is visiting families. God is visiting families. Any contract that has been revoked right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, I return it back to your loved ones. The curse of poverty be broken. Don't say I'm a student. Become rich in the name of Jesus. Become rich, blessed, wealthy. I program your spirit as surely as the Lord lives. God is visiting people. Twenty-one angels standing in this place. I don't know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing it, the whole of this place. The whole of this place. Lift your hands because God is about to visit you. Some of you, it's not just financial issues. God will join everything and visit you. As soon as I shout, receive it. Right from here, down to this row. This is what God is showing me. The power of God will come in a strong way. Lift your hands, all of you. In the name of Jesus, at the count of two. Just two. The wind will blow. One, two. Let it blow right now. Take it. 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 Don't wait till you fall. This has nothing to do with falling. It has nothing to do with falling. Receive by faith. Hallelujah. The Lord is visiting people. I don't know what the case is, but when I touch you, just know God is visiting you. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus the angels of the Lord are pointing people to me in the name of the Lord Jesus in the name of the Lord Jesus aha now out of her come out come out of her Shekotopa. your time is up your spirit out out now pain go come out Lord, visit them. Ushers, help me. Visit them. Please help them. Help them. Ushers, so that they don't fall down one another. Visit them. Visit them. God is visiting your mother right from the States. Oh, no, in UK. God is visiting her right now. Hallelujah. Madam, God is about to locate you. Stand up, please. Stand up. Your time of breakthrough has come. Come and stand here, please. I don't know you, but look at me. Three things the Lord is going to do for you. Number one, God is going to change your financial story in a way that will surprise you. Number two, who is sick? Somebody is seriously sick in your family. It's my husband I have. It's your husband. Because this is what I'm seeing. This is what is sugar? Sugar. Yes, yes. What is sugar? What is sugar? I'm hearing sugar. Diabetes. Diabetes. Yes. Do, do I know him? Have I met your husband? I'm hearing sugar. The Holy Spirit is telling me sugar. Diabetes. Is that correct? I'm going... BP, BP. I'm BP. Look at me. The third thing God is going to do. Are you building? Are you building? Madam, look at me. Are you? Yes. The Lord is saying that building will be completed. Yes. These three things. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Because you have lifted this seed. Many of you. See. Father, visit her right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Visit families by the power of the Holy Ghost. Visit families in the name of Jesus. See, I tell you, I'm not going to touch everybody. But if I do touch you, just know that God has visited you. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It will bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Bring this sister for me, this one. Yes, come. Did I lay hands on you? It's time for God to visit you. Are you listening to me? Take it. It's over. Whatever it is, it's over. Right now. This fair lady, come. Please. I don't know what is it. Come. Don't see. You people should not be angry at God. God, it, I must not touch you. Do you understand? You can see that we don't have all of the time. Eh? Look at me. I'm going to end a lot of things in your life. Seven things in total. One by one, God is going to show you. Five of them. You wrote, you wrote seven prayer points. Yes, sir. How many prayer points did you? Seven. The Lord says seven things is visiting you and is bringing on. Was I there when you wrote it? Seven things you wrote. Seven things the Lord is visiting them. Lord, that is it. It ends right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Seven things the Lord is visiting you. Somebody wrote 13 prayer points. 13. 13, 13, you wrote 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 13. Who is that? Come, you are the one, come. Was I there when you were writing it? 13 prayer points. 13 prayer points. What did you write about your father? My family. Yes. Peace in my family. Peace in your family. There is fight. Was I there when you wrote it? What did you write about the issue of money? Last week when I went home, my sister was complaining that yes. Because I'm seeing the Lord is showing me your prayer points. That's why I'm reading it to you. Was I there? There's no money. You went home. Even transport to come back. I followed somebody. Somebody gave me a lift. This is, I, I, God said I should do it to prove to you that this is not just guesswork. My God, in the name of Jesus, locates this lady. Your situation ends once and for all. Regina. 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 Who is Regina? Regina, ah, no Regina, don't miss your miracle. You are Regina, you. Ah. No, this Regina is here. Your name is Regina. Where is your mother? She's in Lagos. What's wrong with her? I don't know. Ah. 
Pray for your mother. Huh? Because this is an attack I'm seeing on her. Huh? This is an attack I'm seeing on her. Be careful. Don't let any lecturer talk stories and ask you to come and visit him in the night. Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. Does it make sense to you? Believe it. Huh? And then get into God with all your heart. Are you listening to me? I want to pray for you. This lackadaisical Christian attitude become a genuine Christian right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Grace to pray. Grace. Taiwo, God is visiting your mother. Just look at me. God is visiting your mother. Lord, visit her in the name of Jesus Christ. Right from here. Just as a point of contact, God is touching her in Lagos. Visit her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Visit her. This, this girl, eh? Bring this lady crying. Lord, end this captivity in the name of Jesus. This lady's family do a lot of diabolic things. Are you listening to me? And they have put they have put things in this girl as a medium. This girl you are seeing, she's not the person you are seeing standing here. Hmm? This girl is very old. She's not as young as you are seeing. As in, I mean, in the spirit realm, I'm seeing somebody that is up to 800 years old. Hallelujah. Are you saying? Look at look at this. Bring her. This is what is wrong. They, they invoke spirits of ancestors into this girl. Come and stand here. Because they did it in such a way. Listen. They did it in such a way. And this is the invocation. That no matter how much you are a man of God, you will not see it. This is what they did. Look at. I've seen it. I'm seeing it in the spirit. Look at. This is why this cry is happening. They, they programmed it. I don't know how it is. Many men of God have attended to this lady. They didn't see it. I don't know why. Because as I'm standing now, I'm seeing a tree. This is a tree I'm seeing. A very tall tree. Keep quiet. This lady, you see, she doesn't even know if this lady gets angry, she can beat even five guys put together. Are you listening to me? She, 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 she will, I mean, beat you and put you on the ground that you will cry. Even her, right from a small age, she has been seeing this strange power. This is not normal. I need to rebuke that. Some of you are like that. You just think it's your family. You beat all your classmates in nursery school. Beat all your classmates. In, you are happy about it. Hallelujah. I have to set this girl free. I'm seeing rings on her legs, rings on her hands, uh, ring on her eyes, even on her eyes here. What kind of nonsense is this rubbish thing? Hmm? Keep quiet. This noisy spirit. You will go out now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hmm? Keep quiet. Keep quiet. Huh? Two of us won't be talking. You are going to leave. There is a legal access that is given to you. But the Bible says the captives of the mighty shall be delivered. And listen, leave her. Please leave her. Don't hold her. Look at me. Listen. Behave yourself right now. I'm going to rebuke this some it will create a ripple effect on all our family members because they mentioned their names as they were killing chicken this is what i'm seeing one by one they will mention their names and kill chicken leave her leave her leave her leave her come back just leave her she will come back by herself this thing is more than 800 years this is what i'm telling you 
Am I wasting your time? Am I wasting your time? Leave her, leave her. When she's done, she'll come and stand here. These are demonic things. Don't be distracted by all this drama. Let's concentrate on what God is doing, please. Mama, come. Come and stand here. Your time of visitation has come. I don't know what you came here for. Eh? Your time of what did you come here for? You are barren. Is that? Yes, sir. You are barren. How many years? 13 years. I'm seeing one and three. Mm -hmm. How many years? 13 years. 13 years. You have been barren. Your, your, your situation has come to an end. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on your stomach. What did the doctors tell you is in your stomach? Nothing. They will do scan, nothing. But you are feeling movement in your body. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. In the night when you are sleeping, it will be as if a man wants to sleep with you. Yes, sir. A man comes to sleep yes, and it has even affected your relationship. Yes, sir. Eh? You don't even have affection for him. Yes, yes. Do you know me? No. Have you ever seen me? No. Your time of freedom has come this night. Because this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a stone, a stone inside your stomach. You used to have pain when you sleep. Sharp pain. This is a stone I'm seeing. Hmm? This thing is a demonic thing. Lay your hands. I open this womb right now. Let the womb take in by the power of... Take it right now. All right, it's time for you to go. Now, in the name of Jesus, I challenge you, come and stand here. There's no time. See, demons can distract. If you waste time on them, they are going to distract you. Are you listening to me? All these things are distractions. Learn this. This is not just a place to receive. It's a place to learn. Many people focus. I'm not against all of but it's not necessary. We don't have all of this time. Are you listening to me? Come and stand here. Quickly, come and stand here. It was finance, right? Okay. Let God solve somebody's problem right now. Listen. I release you into financial blessings. 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 Hallelujah. Pastor Jakes is going to come. Bishop Stan is going to come. They are going to speak prophecies into you. Hallelujah. I wish we had time. But as they speak, please receive. Hallelujah. They will speak and while I go up there. When they are done, we'll come and pray on your request. Can you wait a few more minutes? Can you wait a few minutes? Pastor Jackson. Okay. Please, ushers, just cast your offering. Cast your offering quickly. Ushers, all over. If there are no ushers, just be patient. Inside and outside. Please make sure you drop your money to only ushers. Hallelujah. Please lift up your hands. There's no time. Join your hands with Bishop and as we pray, whatever you desire, okay? Whatever giftings you've been trusting God to unlock in your life, whatever dimension of God you've been trusting God to push you into, as we pray corporately, the presence of God, and the oil of God will be poured upon you in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you in Jesus' name. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Even as you have declared through your servant. Lord, as we cast this seed, may it be an end to poverty and financial hardship. In the name of Jesus. You cause doors to be opened. For every family represented here in Jesus' name. We stand in agreement and rebuke Devorah in the name of Jesus. Devorah in form of sickness, in form of accident. We rebuke you in Jesus' name. We set everyone free. Enter into your financial liberty in the name of Jesus. Marital liberty. In the name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me invite the ministers as we pray on the request. If you've not written your request, please write it here quickly. I want to, after this, I'm going to be inviting Uneko and his wife who are going to be dedicating and praying for their child. Hallelujah. And any other woman with child here, you're going to come out with your child. We're going to pray and speak protection after I do that very quickly. Hallelujah. Please. Very quickly. Stretch your hands while you are seated. You don't need to stand up. Stretch your hands as we pray on this request. Go ahead and pray. Father, we pray that you visit your people. Visit your people, oh God. Visit your people. Visit your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, visit families in the name of Jesus. Grant every spiritual blessing that your people are asking for. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray that every prayer point here, Lord, is answered in the name of Jesus. We release the angels of God to bring answers and solutions to needs in the name of Jesus. Let breakthroughs come, academic blessings in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for businesses. We ask that prayer points here about businesses, that the Lord will open up doors in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask for healing. We release the healing of God upon your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We bring salvation into your family. The Lord visits your family in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord blesses you with peace joy in the name of jesus christ of nazareth refreshing comes from the presence of the lord refreshing comes from the presence of the lord in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every closed gate is open in the name of jesus christ of nazareth every dark cloud is rolled away in the name of jesus christ of nazareth father we thank you we give you praise we celebrate you in our lives in the name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah put your hands together for the lord Hallelujah. Please quickly, quickly, quickly. All the children, quickly, quickly. Please save time. We just have about five minutes or so and we're out of. Celebrate them as they come if you know God will give you children. Please come and line up here quickly, quickly. Great are you, Lord. Greatly to be praised. All the earth will sing. Father, you reign. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me pray. Please, Uneku, come up with your wife. How many of you remember them? Worship team, come on, celebrate your own. Technical, celebrate your own too. See, they're all seated together. Is that where they met? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody stretch your hands towards them. This baby is a miracle baby. I tell you. I was there in the hospital. I didn't even know the baby was on the bed. I said, where is the baby? Hallelujah. Stretch your hands and pray. Rebuke the hand of Satan. Do it as though you are praying for your own child. Rebuke the hands of Satan. This baby is blessed. Growing normally. Daddy and mommy are healthy. In the name of Jesus. We dedicate this child in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. This child will grow in wisdom, in stature, Amen. and in favor with God and with men. Amen. We command this child to be an ambassador. Amen. 
we program his destiny to glorify Christ alone. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for peace in this house. This will only be the first child and not the only child. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Jakes and Bishop Stan, can I invite you just to come and lay hands on these children? Hallelujah. As we lay hands, all three of us will lay hands. You just lay hands. I'll come back and lay hands on them. As we lay hands on the children, we rebuke the hands of Satan. We rebuke the hands of Satan. No, let me lay hands on them before they go. We are, we are doing it, all of us, please. Very quickly, these are instructions that God is giving. We are not just doing these things carelessly. Any child, any one child that has anything that is not of God, we cancel it right now. We cancel it right now. Eh? In the name of the Lord Jesus, may the Lord visit this child. Let his hearing be perfected. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. See how wicked Satan can be. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These children are blessed. Where is he? Bring him. The boy ran away. Because this boy wants to kill himself. It's the spirit that wants to kill him. Where is he? I tell him to stand but he went. You see what I told you spirits. He ran away to where? Wherever he is right now. In the name that is above all names. May the Lord visit him. You will go back and you will come and testify. Hmm? I'm seeing the fire of God on him. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord visits him. You are standing on his behalf. In Jesus name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Uh -uh. Come out of this girl. Devil of darkness. May the Lord bless you. Madam, God is really visiting your family. May the Lord. Uh, you came out for yourself. Or for your child. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I prophesy upon your life. Please stand up, everybody. Be rounding up now. Every closed door. In the name that is above all names. I open it right now. Every door of failure and disappointment. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let that door be open now. I pray right now. Any voice that is speaking against you and your destiny, I command those voices to be silenced right now. Whatever is stopping your spiritual development, whatever is stopping your passion for God, one leg in, one leg out, I pray, I release encounters to your life. Encounters with angels. Encounters of heaven. Visions and revelations. Dramatic encounters with Jesus Christ. I pray for the spirit of prayer. May it come upon you in a mighty way. Who is this? Oh, see the boy is back. Come. Look at me. How are you? The Lord will set you free. Eh? You love Jesus. Look at me, look at me. You love Jesus. Do you like what happens to your life? Huh? Are you tired of it? Look at me. Are you tired of it? Eh? You want to be free from it? Huh? Madam, it's not this boy that is doing these things. Are you listening to me? This is a suicidal spirit. Huh? This is demonic. Because this boy is destined to be great. Are you seeing... And this is why the devil wants to destroy him. Hmm? Look at me, my brother. Why did you go away? Okay. He doesn't even know why he left. Hallelujah. The mighty name of Jesus Christ, that devil of darkness. Your time in this boy's body is over. The fire of the Holy Ghost against you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm praying for you right now. Who is Bulus? It's you, 
his uncle. Bulus is his uncle. Do, you, do I know Bulus? Where is he? Hold my hands. Father, I pray that the wickedness of men will not catch up with this boy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my God and my King, I pray for a dramatic visitation. Look at me. Look at me. Go to church. Join a fellowship. Huh? These bad guys that are around you, they will destroy you. I cancel your appetite for them. They are, they, are trying to, they are trying to introduce you into wheat and all of this nonsense. You will not have appetite for any of these things. Hmm? You will become an obedient and a respectful child. This hardened heart this night has been replaced with the heart of stone. Salvation comes to this family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Rehila. Who is Rehila? Do you know anybody called Rehila? What is, I mean, well, I'm hearing the name Rehila. This is your daughter? Come. How are you, my dear? Hold my hands. See a mystery. I'm going to be praying for you. But is that your sister that is going, hold, hold on, don't tell me. I, I don't want you to tell me. Hmm? Don't tell me, don't worry. That's your sister, dear. I'm seeing light. It's leaving you and it's entering. I'm going to pray for you, but the prayer is going to affect her. Hold my hands. I set you free right now. I set you free right now. Lose, lose her from that chain. Be loose right now. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit. There is deliverance going on in your family right now. I don't know why this is happening, but God is bringing you from Brother, look at me. Please be a gentleman, okay? Be a gentleman. Love God. Be serious with your life. You are a healer. Okay. Well, you came out. Let me pray for you. The, the Lord is not giving me anything exactly. What do you want the Lord to do for you? Ah, you don't know. I'll just pray generally for you. Go. Is that okay? Lay your hands on your chest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I command favor to your life. I command favor. Favor. Favor is one blessing that the Lord has given us here. I release it into your life right now. Whatever has been a challenge for you, may God speak it. Listen, when God speaks over your situation, that's all it ends. If you are here, I didn't call your case, but you came with an expectation right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. May the Lord visit you at that point of your need. Every habit here that is not of God, masturbation, pornography, all of these devilish things that are destroying people, I cast it out of your life forever. I cast it out of your life forever. It will not return again. I cast it out. I cast it out of your life. Every form of immorality that stops you from entering the dimension God wants to take you, I release grace upon you to walk in genuine holiness and purity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your parents and your loved ones. As God visits you here, may he visit them. As God visits you here, may he visit them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as we step into the seventh month, may it be a time of perfection for you. May it be a time of perfection for you. May it be a time of perfection for you. What you have not accomplished from January to June, accomplish it in July. I command promotion. I command promotion. 
all of you in ministry, I pray that you will see a greater anointing in your ministries. I release greater fire in your fellowships, in your churches, in your ministries. Let devils be casted out. Let the sick be healed. Let sinners be saved in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command increase and expansion for ministries here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All of you planning for marriage, I command whatever resource you need, I release it for you. Even if the man has not come, I bring him into your life. Even if the woman has not come, I bring her into your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, inside and outside, this is an opportunity for those who have never given their hearts to the Lord. Please stand up. Everybody keep standing, please. Hallelujah. The greatest miracle that can happen in this place is that you are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. You have seen the miracles and all of these things. But there are many of us that need to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And right now, as we begin to clap, I'll count one to five. Praise God. Inside and outside, please give them space. Inside and outside. I want you to come before the Lord here. You've never given your heart to the Lord or you made a decision for Jesus once. You made a decision for Jesus once. But you found yourself derailing. Please come out and stand here in the name of Jesus. Please, leave your seat and come out. Appreciate them. They are coming. God bless you. Please rush, rush, run, run, run. Don't be afraid. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Don't be ashamed inside and outside. God bless you as you come. They are coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Outside, make sure you don't stay back. Don't let any devil rob you of the greatest blessing. Keep coming, keep coming. Young and old, keep coming. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, when I do this, Selena and my sister and their roommates, please you come and stand. I'll pray for you. Hallelujah. All of you. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, those of you in front. Thank you so much for coming. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I love you. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm born again. I'm saved. Jesus is Lord of my life. I denounce sin and Satan. From today, the Holy Spirit lives in me. I have eternal life and the gift of righteousness and I will reign in this life and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that I'll never be the same again my life is transformed. hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.